This gives him time to slowly <laughs> polish each of his bullets and one by one put them back mm-hmm. into the gun that's mm-hmm. not quite put together yet. And he's adding piece after piece. Yeah, he could have just... Literally, Wes could have just reached out and grabbed like a spring. Yes, yeah, work. right, exactly. <laughs> and he won his piece. <laughs> 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 just like, no, uh, not a working oh, gun anymore. Oh, dude, give it back. Give it your. I'm taller than you. I will get it. I will get it. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we just can't help it. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right. Heath, welcome back. Mormon Movie Month. We got um, one more. Very just, exciting. We're almost out <laughs> almost of it. Almost done. Yeah. Now, the unfortunately, worst. Eli checked out a little bit early. He's not able to join us today, but in his stead, we're happy to welcome back our special guest masochist, Emmy Award winning science communicator, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Mm, Mormon Movie Month. <laughs> I'm always excited about the noise that's about to happen when you get introduced. <laughs> the sad, disappointed noise that we all know. God. This is a long one, too, guys. Two hours <laughs> of this shit. Two, two hours. It was like basically edited like a scathing atheist episode. It was like two hours and four seconds or something. So not quite as good as us. But yeah. All right. So uh, tell us, Heath, what two hours will we be breaking down today? Well, two hours and four seconds. I mean, like, take it seriously, guys. We watched Brigham City. It's the story of uh, Wilford Brimley's mustache, mm-hmm. I'm pretty yep. sure. Plus, like, a murder thing. I wasn't paying attention yeah. except for the mustache. <laughs> Brimley is a Momo. If I knew that, I forgot it. I feel like I knew that and forgot it, but I found out again. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah it died last year in Utah somewhere, yeah. Oh, wow. sad. Oh, that's sad. It wasn't diabetes. Right? We all had diabetes <laughs> in the fucking pool. Oh, so many times in our notes. <laughs> I bet you it was diabetes and they were like, we can't do that. Yeah, That's we fucked. can't. We have, to like, we have to cover this up. Somebody needs to shoot him in the face now or whatever. <laughs> All right, Ed Kara, how bad was this movie? Well, if you like watching grown men ugly cry while choking down flesh bread, <laughs> you're going to love this movie. <laughs> A lot of flesh. Okay, I feel like I feel like I'd like. You're overselling it. Okay, you're. (laughs) If you like watching grown men ugly cry while choking down flesh bread, you will tolerate this movie. Okay, yeah. There you go. Or you are Mormon and you will love this. Yeah, or you will somewhere between tolerate and love this movie. There you go. All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best, being the worst at? Oh yeah, for sure. Best worst. Quick draw, which, <laughs> which to be fair was a sl- sl- slow draw. I was it was weeping what? with laughter while this was happening. <laughs> it's so Are long. You just, this slow you're draw. just waiting until you have an excuse to shoot this motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god! Could have stopped this many times. Oh. <laughs> Chose not to. We will get there. Oh so yeah! Good. Spectacular close. If okay. they meant that to be funny. That, this is a genius thing near the end of the movie. There are a couple of things in Act 3 of this movie that I can say that about. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> so I want to go with best worst red herrings. Okay. Because ostensibly this is a whodunit. Right. But it's a yeah. guy in the hat killed the other guy in the hat. It's completely random. There's like there's no there's no clues. It's just a, there's a random group of people and you pull one out of the hat and it turns out to be him. And so the way that they offer up red herrings is to like, they'll just show a character staring off in the distance and they'll play like creepy music box tones or something. Right. Yep. Yeah. I'd be like, could, could be this go, Must guy. Be him, Cause he looks like a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot of pedo casting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go with best worst bread. So, <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah, Cara, I think you page. mentioned this earlier, the choking down the flesh bread. So, yeah, we get a couple of Mormon church scenes in this movie and they take it really seriously. They, you know, it's like a solemn moment and they pan over to the crowd and they're sitting there very, you know, religiously. And then there's the moment where they're going to do the flesh bread thing that they do their version of the sacrament right the communion sacrament yeah. yes yeah so they pan over and there's like it's so serious there's like silver trays literally and 
virginal young kids with like velvet white robes angelically like about to present the- but you know this is just what it's like that's real like totally yeah, real i yeah. think they didn't even amazing i don't even think they scripted that they just filmed in some church <laughs> that's very possible that was yeah. just sunday morning <laughs> and, but at the very end of this thing they pull off the like it's like steamer trays it's like fancy silver they're like spit polishing it and then they finally pull up the top of the the silver tray and it's literally wonder bread yes. actually literally yes. wonder bread and they're like turn it up and they're like jesus bread jesus bread. It's no this wonder is bread. legitimate like it's so funny i didn't bat an eye at this because that's just what it's like on sunday morning that's all of those things wow. are real all of those things are real it's like they were gonna feed ducks wrong right yes like that's- I- <laughs> yes they feed very fancy ducks in their in their sunday best <laughs> I that's amazing. I think the uncles might have confirmed this for me once too, but I filed it in my head as like, nah, okay, they were exaggerating with literally Wonder Bread getting torn up in that situation, like for ducks. No, it's like everybody Ace religion looks so fucking weird when you don't know it, right? Ah, that's that's, uh, that was my first clue towards atheism. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of weird lingering shots on the other side of this break, so we need a minute to steal ourselves, but we'll be back in a flash with all the dusty bullshit that is Brigham City. Hey, Noah, what you doing? I just workshopping some new slogans for our sponsor this week, Adam and Eve. What do you think of this one? Adam and Eve, the relentless pursuit of erection. Mm, a bit derivative, plus not all sex involves a dick. Okay, good point. Okay, how about Adam and Eve? Finger licking good. Pretty sure that one's taken. Plus, I don't think our listeners are going to need a slogan to remember to buy their fuck stuff from adamandeve.com. Not only are they the industry leader, but they're a generally good company that does important philanthropy like funding sex education in underdeveloped countries and getting condoms to places that need them most. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. But is it as good as America runs on spunkin'? I feel like it's better. Philistine. Plus, right now, our listeners can get almost any one item for 50% off, and then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. They just enter the code AWFUL at checkout and get 10 tantalizing free gifts. A sexy item for him, a special gift for her, which is oddly heteronormative copy for such a progressive company, and a third item you'll both enjoy, if there's only two of you. And six spicy movies. I do like spicy. Plus free shipping. I like that too. That's awful. A W F U L. Offer code awful at checkout at adamandeve.com. Adam and Eve, what's in your butt? Okay, that one's pretty good. Right? Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for Brigham City. Zah! Yeah, let's do this. Awesome. All right, so uh, we're going to do a gritty Mormon murder mystery. Any ideas? Oh, mm. what about a serial killer in a small Mormon town in Utah? Okay, but mm, know, people don't die in Utah. Sorry, don't they? That, don't yeah, they that's, die? that's incorrect. We have incorrect. to agree to disagree, but regardless, we, we can't show any serial killer stuff. What are we, Methodists here? <laughs> right, sorry, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> yeah, gross. No, yeah. They don't even have hat magic, yeah, stupid. Not yeah, at all. No, so, not Methodists. Uh, um, okay, okay, uh, what if we don't show any of the killer stuff? You know, we just tell you in the movie. About the killer stuff. Yes, yes. Tell, don't show. That's what I learned in film school. Tell, they don't say show. That in film school. That's what yep. I thought. Good right. idea. Uh, but is that going to be gritty? Well, hmm. well, it is if we tell you it's gritty. Right. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Make a note. Use word gritty. I like it. Nice. Okay. So, how is Mormon God involved? Oh, right. Oh. Okay, we do Mormon stuff uh, like adjacent to the plot, like also okay. do that. Well, all right, but what's a good Mormon thing to do with a gritty murder mystery? You think? Uh, oh, oh, Wonder Bread? Wonder Bread, love it. That's a movie, good meeting, meeting adjourned. Nice. Love bread. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off watching our hero wake up at length. It's that kind of movie. <laughs> oh, everything <laughs> takes a little longer than it needs to. Just or a lot longer. A lot longer. I mean, he didn't shoot up out of bed impossibly. And that okay, was nice right. for you. No? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I didn't realize he did me a favor, but he did. But we learned that this is the sheriff, and he wears a leg brace. 
and he studies the Bible. Yeah, I was like, is this a polio movie? I was so confused <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> do they ever address that? Of course they do later when they talk about the wife and the kid. And he was in a coma. Yeah, uh-huh. Did it they matter? don't directly address it. You, they, they, it lets you do a little of the... No, uh, <laughs> okay. no, it's right. not. No, but I do get it. Like, at least, at least this movie has things like strings, like threads that you can put together later. Mm-hmm. At least it has foreshadowing. At okay. least it has internal consistency for the characters. Other than the, other than one very important <laughs> character. All right. So it's like Chekhov's gun, and then later they're like, "Hey, look! It's still Chekhov's gun on the wall. Look, look. Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. That's yes. look. That's the level of filmmaking that Kara has come to appreciate after doing like whatever seventeen <laughs> of these with us or whatever. Oh, my bar is so low now that I'm like, right? I'm watching a movie that they like paid somebody to make. <laughs> right. Whoa. <Yes. laughs> Whoa. This was a film with a budget. It was. I think they made yeah, almost a million dollars in box office in 2001. Wait, yeah. what? Weird. Yeah. The only in Utah. Right? Well, yeah, exactly. Probably. <laughs> like, How many Mormons went to the movies that Which weekend. makes it even more impressive. It in is some actually. Way. It's yeah. annoying. Very really. impressive. So he's waking up. He's got leg braces over his cowboy boots. Mm-hmm. He's got a revolver. All the yep. cops in this movie, by the way, have like six shooters, which is yep. weird because it's 2001. That's the rules. It was really hard to figure out when this movie was. <laughs> at, at the, it, it's, it's set in the modern day or like it was made in 2001. It was set then. But yeah, it was kind of hard to tell at first. Also, I think my my most uncomfortable opening scene here is that he sits down to eat breakfast mm-hmm. and he eats a banana like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> a banana... Wait. How did he do it? So a banana comes in its own wrapper. Mm-hmm. Sure. Right? And you unpeel it and just put it in your mouth. That's how a That'll banana is eaten. Yep. Yes. But he takes a full-sized plate and a knife <laughs> and does plate? the thing where he's doing the, the, the one-handed banana cuts where the knife goes up against his thumb. Mm -hmm. And he just slides it to these slices. But he's not slicing it into yogurt, into cereal. (laughs) He's just slicing it onto the plate and then putting it in his mouth. It's like a whole step that's completely unnecessary. That's terrifying. I didn't remember all these details. If I had caught that, I would have been like, you're, you're a murderer. You're, you're a cop and a serial murderer. killer. Oh, he's yeah. butchering the banana, which uh, is all cereal. I could think about later when we'll get banana there. He references cereal, how much he has a taste for blood. Oh, you're right. <laughs> That's true. Right. He's murdering that banana. He is. All right. So, yeah. So he eats his breakfast, studies his Bible. He leaves his house and he has a little small talk with his adorable neighbor who is fixing her fence at the time. Oh, right, right. right. Yeah, she's kind of hot. Yeah, th- yeah, she really is. And she's like, come on, don't get now. I feel like I'm going to get murdered now because you talked to me right at the beginning <laughs> and you're a cop in this shitty movie. Yeah, and in the same sentence, he references baptism and companions. Oh, yep. so Mormon. Like, this whole movie gave me the <laughs> yeah. worst PTSD. You guys have no idea. Okay, so that was real. Like they talk about it. Like they talk about those stats of like baptisms and whatever. Like yes, like they read a box score in the paper and <laughs> yes. they're just like bantering about it. Yes, because wow. that's the whole point of the church, right? It's <laughs> right. an evangelical yeah. religion. The whole point is to fellowship and get people saved, right? To the extent that they go through records of dead people and then baptize them. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. So he heads to work. Uh, this is where we meet Terry, his young partner cop or his young deputy. He's the sheriff. And we also meet Terry's wife, who is a Mormon. We know because she's pregnant and holding a baby on her hip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she's wearing puffy sleeves. Well, that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that a thing? Oh, puffy yeah. You sleeves? don't wear sleeveless clothes, really. Because that's, you know, oh, whatever. that's important. Right. I mean, you can Modesty. because, no, you can't. I think, gosh, see, I never got to the point of wearing them, but I'm trying to remember my parents that garments are short sleeved. They're not sleeveless. Oh, right. Yeah. You got to cover up your magic underwear. Oh, yeah. oh the, the, the asbestos, the yes. fireproof stuff. Yep. Yes. Yep. The fireproof, <laughs> bulletproof underwear that Joseph Smith was <laughs> wearing when he got shot to death. Um, sure. They probably <laughs> shot him in the face is what it is. Anyway. <laughs> So Wilford Brimley is there at the office. All uh, of us wrote, I hope he says diabetes. So <laughs> when, so when's he going to say diabetes? Wilford Brimley <laughs> is a delight in this movie. Yeah, He's he really is. singing. His mustache is on point. <laughs> Everything about him. As soon him. as I see him, all I can think about is Tom Cruise dropping out of the ceiling in the firm and beating the shit out of Wilford Brimley. Aww, yeah, like poor Wilford. He's always the punching bag and never the puncher. Right. <laughs> 
Now, so Wilford Brimley's character, he is the retired sheriff that just can't stop coming into work anyway, you know? I don't get this. This feels like a violation of, like, how is this legal? Is he getting paid? Right? Yeah. He doesn't work there, but he's there every day. I think he's getting paid for both. Also, I feel like he just (laughs) goes there and harasses the woman that works there, the secretary or dispatcher, whatever the peg is. Yeah, he just sings really loud. And she's like, I can't focus. And I'm trying to solve crime. Right. Non-existent crime, but still. <laughs> but yeah, but his, his it, I, they, they play him harassing her as like a running gag in the in the movie. Mm-hmm. We also learn here that Wes, who is the, our main character, the sheriff, is also the bishop. Now, I have no fucking clue when it comes to mormon titles how high up is bishop bishop is the guy okay so one thing that's important to know probably is that there are these things that they call callings which i'm sure just like weird it's just like with prophets right they're like i talked to god so everybody needs to follow me now they're these like self-referential titles but bishops who can only be men by the way is the guy who basically runs that ward So there will be a church. Let's say there's a city and the city's divided up, kind of like redlining. (laughs) So they divide (laughs) up the city into wards, which are like different districts. And then let's say the city has three churches, but nine wards. So three wards will meet at one church, three at the other, three at the other. And so that means that they'll have different meeting times for church on Sunday and for gotcha. you know the activities during the week. Each ward has its own bishop. So he's the guy. He has an office. The people come talk to him. He's kind of like the local priest, but the difference is... He's assistant to the regional manager. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah. The difference is in the Mormon church, nobody gets paid. None of this right. is their job. No, they don't get paid. No, they all yeah. have day jobs. So like the bishop, it's a quote calling. So he's doing that on top of doing his job and he'll do it for a certain amount of time and then somebody else might get the calling and they'll take over, which is why later when they release somebody from her like secretary duties, oh, they say, right. yeah, because it's a calling as they ca- call it, which means that they've Weird. volunteered to do it. Right. It's all volunteer. Okay. Speaking of which, this is actually where we meet that woman, right? Because she shows up at the police department and she's like, Bishop, I need to confess sins to you. And he's like, I'm actually being paid on the county dollar. Like, that would be (laughs) illegal as all fuck. And she's like, pretty pleased. He's like, "Okay, all right. And then I love how she's like, and could you also remove your gun, please? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. (laughs) But also completely pointless. Her whole her whole plot line did not matter. Nope. What was she stressed about? They don't tell us. And then later she's like, gets released from her position. And then she cries a little. And you're like, I don't understand. Why did this happen? Yeah. I didn't even notice that was the same person. But yeah, none of this matters. <laughs> yeah, what's was happening that right inconsequential. now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, she, she's like, I need to confess sins. And he's like, okay. She's like, you need to take off your gun. And he's like, what? How bad are your sins? lady?" <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm being a cop right now. I guess if you confess a crime, that makes sense. But I, I feel like I yeah. should hold my gun now that you said don't. <laughs> Right. That's, but then we cut immediately nice. to her leaving and he's like, well, those sure were some sins. Bye. Yeah. And we never. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so and then they give fucking Wilford Brimley more shit about not leaving. Oh, yeah. Right? And then they make old old guy jokes. <laughs> yes, Young guy uh-huh. makes an old guy. joke. So to be clear, the deputy is like 12. Yes. But he has a wife <laughs> and two kids. He's very, very young. And he's constantly making old guy jokes towards Wilford Brimley. And then Wilford Brimley's like, you all can go to hell. And I was like, whoa, because that is so not Mormon. (laughs) Right. I've never heard a Mormon person be like, go to hell. He is an edgy Mormon. We'll learn more about that. Yeah. Oh, as we learn later. Yeah. But Mormons literally say things like, dang it all to heck. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Heath and I actually once had a roommate that was uh, ex-Mormon and we just cracked up every time he said, dang it. I say dang it still to this day. And it's so funny. So I don't drink. And that's just because I don't like to drink. Trust me, I've done a lot of drugs. Um, But I I don't like alcohol. And I have this friend who, if we're ever out and about and somebody offers me a drink or they ask what I'm drinking and I say, oh, I don't drink. And they go, why? She goes, oh, she's a recovering Mormon. And I'm like, don't say that. That's not why. All right. And then they get a call. They uh, Wes and Terry, the, the sheriff and the deputy get a call that there's been a fight out at the construction site. Mm, right. So they have to go take care of that. But as with every fucking location in this movie, we have to have a long scene of someone driving to it first. 
so the key on this driving sequence, though, the only important thing going on here is that as they drive out to the construction site, Wes sees a suspicious car under a suspicious tree. Yeah, <laughs> doing suspicious parking things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So they get to the construction site to see about the fisticuffs. <laughs> we meet Ralph the Foreman. I love him. Yeah, Ralph's fine. Yeah, he seemed like a jovial fella. Yeah, I liked him. I don't know. He's very Mormon, which we don't realize yet, but then we see him in church. Is he? Because yeah. he's also, I think, the token Lamanite of this movie, yeah, he is. is he not? No, but he's super Mormon. I mean, they, they have to make him one of those red herrings at one point because they're like brown skin. Dun, dun, dun. Right, exactly. <laughs> that scene is ridiculous. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bananas. He also uses a straight up racial slur. He's not the one who uses it. He's referring to some words that were thrown, but he straight up says the word speck. Yeah. Just Oh, uh, does he actually say that in the movie? Yeah. So, yes. So the cops show up and they're like, yeah, we got a call about a fight. And he's like, yeah, you know, it was just a white guy using a racial slur and then a fight from that. I don't even think that's against the law in Utah, is it? And he's like, not really. No. Yeah. No. But he felt the need to say the racial slur out loud. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm hmm. And then the cop had to be like, yeah, you got to stop bringing in all these immigrants. You'd be fucking lame it. Because yeah. Ralph is a construction company owner and apparently he's hiring evil outsiders and bring right. them into this little town. People yeah. from what what ain't even from around here, yes. Yeah, subtext, yeah. <laughs> not white. Yep. So, and then also, speaking of red herrings, we have to meet, uh, I only have this character down as abs, right? Because he's <laughs> fucking ripped. But he's standing up on this roof shirtless, screaming, man, there's so many churches. I can see churches from everywhere to where. There's a lot of churches. And we're supposed to go like, mm-hmm. That's your killer right there. Yeah, I wasn't sure. It was <laughs> was that ironic? Because I wrote shirtless redneck loves churches. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he actually was like, wow, this is the best <laughs> town ever. There's so many churches. I, I, I took it as being sarcastic or something. And I have him down as atheist abs for the rest of the movie. Oh, oh yeah. I thought he was definitely supposed to be atheist guy that we're supposed to hate and maybe think is, you know, a murderer oh, already. Oh, I had no that. idea. I if thought he you was just want really me to excited. hate that man, do not show him to me shirtless, okay? <laughs> also, by the way, this is neither here nor there, but a sleepy little Mormon town where literally everybody is Mormon and there are no other religions in that town has fewer churches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are literally like two or three LDS churches and that's it. That, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's not like a big competition like yeah, with yes, Baptists. Yes, like in every other small town where there's, yeah, a lot of right. religious diversity. Anyway, just... It, it, yeah, interesting point. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So then we, we head over to the cemetery for some quick backstory insertion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we need that. Yeah, we need that. The word gritty. We need the word gritty now. <laughs> yes. So they insert it here. Yeah. But so we learn here that Wes has a dead wife and I'm assuming son. Well, the, I, it, it was his son, I guess we learned later. Yeah, but he was, yeah, he was young. I think it said he was 11 or something. If yeah, I, I, I thought it was eight, but yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Half young kid. attention. Yeah. Uh, no, but th and that, that's it. That's all that happens in the scene. It's just like, look at grave, be sad, be dark, cut two cops. Yep. But there were birds and insects, which is why Flowers, I wrote they put, this but this movie is old and the picture sucks, but at least they there understand were birds fully. And oh, you could hear them. Yes, maybe? they understand fully <laughs> and they have good sound. This is a this is a throwback to the last piece of shit movie you guys made me watch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what because this is going to come out at the end of September. I don't know where that fits in the timeline and everything. But yeah, right. That's, <laughs> but, but the key is is that we've your standards have broken down to the point where you're like, oh, they know background noises. Good. Go yeah, on. I was okay. like, I, I feel transported. <laughs> I feel transported to the cemetery right now. I yeah. don't feel like I'm at the beach. Yeah, so. I'm not in the bathroom. There aren't nope. toilet flushing sounds. This is an improvement. <laughs> yeah. And this movie is from the 40s slash 90s or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So we do watch them walk all the way from the car <laughs> to the gravestone. Yep. Yeah. So slow. And back. And back. And back. <laughs> yes, we do. Well, and then we watch them drive back to the goddamn station now of course that's so that they can go back by that suspicious car that was under that suspicious tree and this time they're going to check it out okay is that so how is that suspicious he's like so that car is suspiciously parked motionlessly i'm mm -hmm. gonna check it out what what was suspicious no then? and he's like he pulls out his like little ticket pad and it's like i'm gonna write them a ticket Right. And I'm like, for what? Yeah. That's it's all the way off this the This is like this is like a rural town. Is it illegal to park on grass in a rural town? <laughs> 
so here's the thing. As a pot smoker that's lived in a lot of rural towns, yes, there's a nice car sitting like next to somewhere where you might smoke some weed. Yes, the cops are going to come up there and go, well, we thought maybe it was illegally parked. What's that smell? You know, or whatever. You know, that's like to me, it was like a picnic. It's the middle of the day. It's parked under an idyllic tree in a nice part of town. But they'll also harass you for having a picnic. Um, So. (laughs) But they but they show up at the at the car and it, it damn it if it's not a murder car full of murder blood. It looks like a cheetah <laughs> died in that car. <laughs> it there's gash marks, like deep bloody gash marks across the tire, across the it doesn't just look like somebody died. It looks like they carved up a, a body. Right, like they were turning into a wolf as it <laughs> yes, happened. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, like the director was talking to the art person at one point and they were like, put a uh, slashy blood there. And they're like, what? Like, <laughs> you know, a like cheetah? When you what are you bleed? talking yeah, about? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a cheetah. Now, yeah. Yeah. The dead yes. woman had claws. Let's Don't make sure this me. is emphasis. She had claws. <laughs> yeah. You know how women are. <laughs> so, yeah. So she checks out the abandoned shack that like snuck up on us mm-hmm. and finds the body there. So he calls Peg, the secretary back at the police station and he tells her that there's been a signal seven of course this is such a sleepy town nobody even knows what that means except Wilford Wilford Brimley, knows. Brimley his mustache knows his- he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like signal seven diabetes dead body dead body what? okay but that's the thing like it doesn't mean murder it means dead body like sleepy yeah. town or no people still fucking die of yeah. course yeah but they don't die cheetah and, and death. leave behind bodies but that's the whole point right i think that's the whole point he's like signal seven he doesn't say we have murder on our hands because his whole shtick Wes, the, the the sheriff in this town his whole shtick is i don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers or get anybody freaked out Oh, yeah. Right. I don't want anybody to know this was a murder. I just want them to know it was a dead body, which, by the way, when they panned across the lady's dead body, they don't show her body or her face or anything. They just show her bloody hand. Pretty sure she's pulling a white power symbol. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Pretty sure. (laughs) Wow. It's like a proud point. Full on. I don't think it was back in 2001, but. True. I don't know, man. I'm not putting her hand into the white power symbol. Come on. She goes deep. Maybe that was just a, that was an actor. Nope. Could be. I mean, look, look uh, come on. It's like, uh, I, I would, I could imagine the fucking d- director saying, okay, make sure you do a white power symbol. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Action. All right. So Terry, the, the young deputy, the 12 year old deputy that's with him, he's staring <laughs> at the body and he looks very upset, very sad, very ready mm-hmm. to go out and police that serial killer to death. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Very upset with his giant mole that he really needs to get looked at. Yeah. That looks upper lip. Looks bad. Malignant. That irregular borders. Yeah. It's changing shape the whole movie. Right. <laughs> it's like Roar Shark's <laughs> not, mask. It's not good. Yeah. So, yeah, but so Wes, the sheriff, sends him back into town. He's like, you got to go get the tow truck. I'll stay behind and I'll take pictures with my old ass camera, even for 2001. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a disposable, like, Fujifilm paper yes. camera. It makes me so happy. <laughs> I want this to be one of those special ones that you would have as birthday party favors with like balloons making the border. <laughs> like the little frames. <laughs> it's like a dead woman. <laughs> it's like all I can Your think Honor, of. I know this is kind of awkward, but. <laughs> but I had it left over from my son's. Pr- oh, wait, my, my son's dead too. Never mind. He's got a dot oh. matrix printer out there trying to run the feed through and print them out. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so good. Oh, God. Okay. But then, you know, but they have the FBI come in because it's uh, the car has California plates and they're in Utah so that's international or something the <laughs> FBI has to do that right yeah so the FBI shows up sirens blaring like what this okay but anyway sirens blaring <laughs> You're so funny. You're so upset. I think the thing that bothers me the most about the FBI is that they wear black trench coats in the middle of summer, like for no reason. So ridiculous. Just so you know, they're FBI. It's not just in this movie. It's every movie. The FBI is always dressed like a fucking cologne commercial for vampires. And they show up and they're so out of place. (laughs) And so, and there's two of them. There's Meredith, Mm -hmm. who's like, I feel like I've seen her in something else. I poked around her fucking IMDb page for so long trying to figure out where the hell I wreck it. I think she just looks like somebody else or something. Oh, but she yeah. looks like someone. Yeah, I had she, that feeling the whole time, too. Though. I feel like she looks like 
like somebody who's done like a lead role in some cop procedural or something like that, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. she looks like 90s female lead. Yeah, she's, I mean, it's good casting and she's a pretty good actor. Mm -hmm. But then FBI guy number two who has no name (laughs) is a horrible actor. The worst actor in this movie. Yeah. Jack Mormon. And just stops showing up halfway through. Yeah. He <laughs> just, just a lazily... motherfucking peers. Yes. Oh, yeah. Where the fuck did he go at the end? I didn't even think about no, he's that. He's not there after like four more scenes. He's just like, I don't know, Meredith. This is a bad movie we're in, I think. You <laughs> fucking finish it. Well, and uh, and the whole way that this scene plays out is hilarious because Wes clearly just doesn't want to do the paperwork on this shit. Right. So, yeah. so like the coroner and his partner and everything, they keep coming up and they're like, you sure you don't want to be mad about jurisdiction? This is a movie. You're a cop. You should be mad about jurisdiction or something. Right. And he's like, no, they're going to do all of the work. And yeah, they're going to do it. You know where they're going to do it in Provo. Yeah. Uh, big city. <laughs> going to the, to big the big city. city. <laughs> So yeah, so and and by the way, like the next time we see these guys, it's night. They stood around and watched the FBI do all the real police work for like the whole t- who was policing the town? Oh, nothing happens in this town. Get no. back and the fucking bank's been robbed and everything's been burned <laughs> to the ground. They're like, "Oh, you know, one of us could have not yeah. just watched other people work all fucking day." Come on. This is a Mormon town. At one point he asks the cop, the deputy, <laughs> Yes. If he wants hot chocolate. You want me to bring you some hot chocolate while you wait? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. All I can think is he's like, no, I want coffee. God damn it. <laughs> I want you to leave so I can just stop by Dunkin' motherfucking donuts without your judgy ass looking down on me. <laughs> but and this is important, though. We, we set up here that Terry is very upset by this plan. He wants to investigate this murder and get the folks what done it. And I'm kind of agreeing with Terry here. Literally, Wes is like, let's keep this under wraps. Let's lie to the entire town. Don't worry about it. Let the FBI handle it. And Terry's like, there's legit a woman that was like mauled to death by a cheetah. (laughs) We should tell people there's a cheetah on the loose. And he's like, nope, not in my town. At least do a cheetah bolo. No. (laughs) All right. Yeah. All right. But this is this is Wes's thing here. He is under the impression that he as a, a sheriff is like, pitching a no hitter and nobody's ever once died in this town oh yeah so and they actually like, say that they the, the fbi lady's like has there ever been a murder and he's like not on my watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> right so yeah so he doesn't want to tell anybody he's th- we're watching the fucking we're watching jaws from the mayor's perspective right <laughs> Yeah. Which is exactly how this fucking plays out. So he's like, okay, we're going to lie to everybody and just not let them have the information. And he's like, that is the Mormon thing to do in a situation (laughs) of any kind, isn't it? (laughs) So, okay. And the FBI tells him like, hey, you know, um, I know that you don't want anybody to know about this and shit, but we are going to have to investigate the murder. And he's like, okay, okay, but don't look like you're investigating a murder, okay? And they're All like, right. don't worry, we won't show up for your parade in black trench coats in the middle of the <laughs> summer. <laughs> so so anyway, so we cut to them showing up at the parade in black trench coats in the middle of the summer. Yeah. Yeah. We get to pan over this little town, oh. which is a Wilford Brimley evolution chart. Every single person <laughs> in this town is a different stage of the growth of Wilford Brimley. Yep. Oh, for sure. And then the girls are even better because there are princesses in convertibles with sweaty armpits. There are Miss Brigham. Miss Brigham. <laughs> there are at least I counted like 19 Kate Goslin haircuts. Yeah. There's so many Kate Goslin haircuts. <laughs> There's a lot of casual baptism banter. Yes. It's just, it's just. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. Everybody's in the background. Well, I, he got nine baptisms. Really? I, 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 I only got eight baptisms. I didn't realize they were going to give that count that ninth one. No, they did a VAR. Yeah. That one got a rule. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and then we see Terry. He's hating life because he's got to be a small town cop helping kids cross the road. But like, the road is blocked off, right? He's not doing, like, kids are walking across the street and he's like, be careful. God damn it. I hate this so much. It's like, that's not how it's done. <laughs> yeah, he's also completely unnecessary. You could just leave Terry. Nobody cares. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go do something useful. We also get another one of those moments where a woman is on the camera and is like, all right, come on. I know. So Ms. Brigham is riding through, you know, on a float or whatever. And we get this super slow-mo, like, almost pop scary shot of her for a second. And mm-hmm. She's like, all right, I'm getting murdered now, too. Great. <laughs> You're right. Great. That I'm on is the mur- what that Am I on the murder was. cam? What did I say? Yep. 
Exactly. And, <laughs> and some guy does like a hoot hoot to her. And I, I see that's not, I didn't even read that as the murder cam. For me, I, I'm so, I don't know, like narrowly focused on horrible sexism that I, I was giving the movie props here because okay. some guy yeah. was like, woo, woo. You know, he did the like whistle thing and she looked at him like, fuck you. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, get it, girl. Yeah, she gave him a look like, I'll tell you what, at the end of this thing, I'm going to have the most impressive IMDB page of anybody on here but Wilford Brimley and she does. Doesn't have a speaking goddamn role in this movie and she does. Anyway. Oh, really? It's just, it's all like horror movie schlock and shit. But yeah. yeah but she's, still, she yeah, works. Yeah, That's few. good. Yeah. It's about to pass the Bechdel test. Then maybe we murder her. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So we got close on that one. <laughs> Woo. Um, so, so Wes asks the two FBI agents, he sees them there and he's mm-hmm. like, okay, are you guys Mormon? And she's like, Meredith is like, hell no. And then he's like, kind of. And she goes, you're a Jack Mormon. And I'm very confused by this statement. Is this a thing? You don't. What's a Jack? Mormon? Oh, I was going to ask you if that's a thing. Yeah. No. Know. So uh, uh, that's just a, it's a, a Mormon term for a mino, you know, or mino? somebody who right. strayed from the faith. That's that's what I got from it. Yeah, yeah, they're saying, yeah. And it's like worse than an ethnic slur in Utah. It's like you know, uh, yeah. you're, oh, you're, you're like you could, you should know better. You're a white delightsome person, and you're not really a Mormon anymore. So it's like the worst thing. Yeah. Oh, we have to. We cannot pass over this part of the movie though. Before he goes to talk to the FBI agents, this might be my favorite moment in the movie. He stops to talk to his buddy, the photographer. I have him as photo Matt Steve. So yes. he says, hey, man, here's my disposable camera. I need you to, you know, to develop these pictures on the down low. Don't tell anybody about them. I'm like, oh, please don't even tell them that they're murder photos. Don't even tell them. And then he doesn't fucking tell him for no, no. reason. He's literally yes. like, you need to develop these. He's like, what's on them? And he's like, I'm not going to tell you so that you'll be surprised. Like, yeah. what is the point <laughs> of that? Photo man Steve is just sure he's about to develop some pictures of Wes fucking the pool boy or something. And he gets a dead body. That's so (laughs) fucked up. (laughs) And later, oh my God, later when he gives him the photos in the envelope, he's like, do I get to understand any context whatsoever? And he's like, sorry, man. And he's like, all right, well, you've kept my secret. So I'll keep yours. What the fuck is his secret? Right, like, oh, come God. on, like, look. I mean, that would—that's a murdery thing to do. I know you know he's a cop, but still, like, if you're a cop, you would just be like, yeah, it's ongoing investigation, blah blah blah. Why would you be so coy about it if you weren't the killer? I know. Why wouldn't you just be like, hey, ongoing investigation? You know, can't disclose any information. But if we have some crime scene photos here, and I'd really rather keep them out of public view, do you mind? You know, yeah, doing these for us, we'll pay you. Right. Your fee. <laughs> but he does it in the most murdery no. way possible. No, no warning. So then we head over to church to watch mm-hmm. Wes wear his bishop hat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And this starts off with an establishing shot that's about 19 hours long of white people singing off key. Oh, I had the worst flashbacks here. I know <laughs> these hymns. <laughs> I know yeah. that book. I know those bad suits and that no, organ no. music and the bad conducting. I was twitching. I was twitching during the scene <laughs> because I'm telling you, I don't think they shot this for the movie. I think they just had that guy go stand up in a regular church. Yeah. And that's just, they just filmed church. That's what this scene was. Well, they didn't get any of the police stuff right. But yeah, I, I would imagine <laughs> they got this part right. Yeah. 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 And apparently, Carrie, you mentioned this before. They got this. This is Judy Perkins, who's the one who came into the Mm -hmm. sheriff's office at the beginning. She's like, I'd like to retire. And (laughs) so Sheriff Bishop is like, hold on. Everybody in favor of letting her retire from apparently a job she volunteers for and makes no money. And doesn't get paid for. Yeah, yeah. that was weird for you. And then she gets just barely approved for retirement from her volunteer job. And that's real, you're saying? Yeah, that's real. I just blinked my eye at that part. The part I was perseverating <sighs> on was like, what did she admit to the cop? Right, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Why? Because like, she looked get disturbed when he called her out. Like, we're going we're gonna to release her from her role as Relief Society president, I think was what it was. And she was like, mm-hmm. and then they're like, yeah, sure, I don't give a shit. And then she right. sits down and she's like, I have to go to the bathroom. And you're like, what is happening? And we are done with that character for the rest of the <laughs> yes. movie. We will never refer back to that at all. Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> she might as well just dive out the window at this point. All right, I'm done with the yeah. plot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So, and then we have to introduce my analog into the, like the audience's analog into this whole thing in the form of Meredith, the FBI agent. She like comes into church and sits in the back and just sits there with this like, oh, fuck is this creepy shit all about <laughs> look on her face the whole time? <laughs> oh, yeah, because then they start to prepare the sacrament. Yes. And it, in slow-mo for no reason. Like, <laughs> they literally just document the sacrament in a regular church meeting in real time. Like, that's all we're it's watching. Six fucking minutes this goes on. <laughs> like, I'm, literally, I time this shit. It goes, there's another fucking bread eating scene that goes on for eight minutes later, but six fucking minutes of this movie is just people walking around going, you want some bread? Oh, yes, I'd like some Jesus bread. Let me pass it on to the next person. Oh, you would like some bread? That goes on for six goddamn <laughs> minutes. Yeah, and they really show. But then also the jello shots thing or yep. whatever that it's was. Water. It's water. <laughs> It's water. It's just water. Do they water. make it red? Food coloring? No, there's no red. It's just clear. I saw. You did not red. see red. No, you were you were thinking of Catholics, and you put that weird um, frame in there. I think I was thinking of Jello shots. Yeah, you might that. have been, but because <laughs> Catholics or, or most religions drink wine, but Mormons are allergic to wine, and so sure. they use water as the blood of Christ because that's what blood looks like. It looks like water, and it's what? the the tiniest plastic cups you've ever seen yeah okay. they're like thimble sized plastic cups they're jello shots yeah it, yeah they that's are what, jello shots. I, I think that's why i saw jello shots. yeah yeah, yeah but it's it's just water it's so wasteful oh god yeah it's wow so wasteful it's so much plastic well, isn't utah like super lush and uh wet as yeah. a place yes yes <laughs> i mean i think it's less about wasting water and more about putting a shitload of plastic yeah into like ocean. everybody has one tiny <laughs> right. swallow and that deserves its own plastic one use mm -hmm. cup Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no drinking wine from a chalice here. I love, though, multiple times in this script, Heath writes, is this real? And I write next to him, yes. Yep. yes yeah, exactly he saw it every time. It. It's yeah, real. That's how, that's how they do it. <laughs> All right, so, and then we get the scene where, so, Wes is sitting in his bishop's office, and a very disturbed Steve the Photo <laughs> Matt guy shows up, and he's like, hey, man, um, <laughs> you want to fucking warn me next time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I, he's like, I just want to be super clear. Never, ever fucking do that again. Um, yeah, he literally says that. He's like, I am never going to do you another thing. Yes. <laughs> Dude, you got to take a picture of CW dot 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 at the front of your reel or something. This is crazy. <laughs> He's like, and that wasn't uh, that wasn't your work, was it? He's like, I, no, no, I'm not answering any questions. Moving on, moving on. Yeah, it was weird. It's like, why? Why doesn't he just say, no, I didn't kill that woman. Clearly, I'm investigating a murder. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm the sheriff. <laughs> so... <laughs> And then, all right, this is some fuck. I love this scene so goddamn much. We cut to some weird fucking sub sermon that happens after okay. the main event. Let me explain this. <laughs> Please do. Okay, I, I will need you to explain. I have all question marks. Right. All my notes are like, what? <laughs> Every note is a question. Is that, okay. how is Jesus involved? What the fuck? So Mormon church is three hours long. <sighs> yeah. Every Sunday. And that's on top of Yikes. youth group or Relief mm -hmm. Society or whatever you do on Wednesday nights. And then every morning when you're in high school going to seminary for an hour before school every morning. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, I had to go to seminary at 6 a.m. every Ugh. day. It's the only saving grace, <laughs> saving grace. The only silver lining of that was that that's how I learned how to drive. Because my dad let me drive the car because nobody was on the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so... <laughs> But Mormon church, okay, first of all, there are no sermons because there are no pastors. Right. Nobody gets paid to write like a story and preach. That's not the way they do it. So the bishop doesn't get up and talk. That's why it looks so weird. He's always just sitting there weirdly because there's no like, the bishop doesn't stand up and run church. What happens is that people, again, everything's volunteer. People volunteer talks. And it rotates. So people from the congregation are like, this week I did some real Bible study or I, I studied the Book of Mormon and now I want to talk about forgiveness. Oh, God. God three it's hours open mic of, night yeah. for three open hours mic night. of fucking Mormons doing open mic. So that's the first hour or maybe it's the first hour and a half. I can't remember. God, it's been so long now. That's what they call... Um, uh, uh, what's what do they call the main service? I mean, sacrament happens during the main service, but I can't remember what the main service is called. Anyway, after that, you break off and you go to Sunday school. 
And that's where we are now. We're in Sunday school. I see. Which is these little Wait, subgroups where you're divided by age. These are fucking grown-ups. Grown-ups yeah. go to Sunday school? Yes, you're divided by age. So this is like old old people Sunday school. What the God. fuck? Yeah, yes, yes. This nightmare. is a thing. So they just, they study at a quote different level. Like, like this is racism class that we're attending well, I, right Yeah, now. okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, so the teacher at Sunday school is standing up there like picking apart Jesus messages and asking them what they mean that means to them now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. FBI lady is shrinking in the back of the fucking room. <laughs> you have to volunteer for them to call on you, don't you? Yeah. So apparently Jesus said we should be wise as serpents and harmless as doves yes. at the same uh, time. That's the passage they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And so Sunday school teacher is like, so what does this mean? Do we have to lose our innocence to gain wisdom? And I'm like, yes. Yep. <laughs> right. That's the way that works. That's a hard yes. That's what happens when you decide to no longer be Mormon. Right. That's that's usually that term. I love that one guy's like, hold on. Uh, I think I got it. I, I've got a good analogy. Being Mormon is like going to a used car lot. <laughs> yeah. You can't be gullible. He says while he's at a three hour service that involves <laughs> age broken up skit groups. And fucking open mic. Yes, exactly. Oh, amazing. I think Jesus was saying, don't be a fucking idiot. It's like, no, you're a Mormon, so it wasn't that. <laughs> also, did you guys notice his epic turquoise ring? I did not. That he was wearing no. on his pinky? It was epic. And then he turns to, like, Joe Blow, and he's like, sorry, Joe Blow. Didn't mean to throw you under the bus there as a used car salesman. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <So> <laughs> But then, of course, they do call on Meredith. They're like, oh, you're a new person. Why don't we embarrass you by making you read something in front of the whole class? And she's like, I don't want to. And they're like, please. Just read the like, passage, you bitch. And she's yeah. like, all right. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. She legit shames her. She's like, literally, the scene goes like this. Oh, I'm not Mormon. I'm just observing. And she goes, oh, well, you're not fucking illiterate, are you? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she's exactly. like, Jesus. Okay, sure. I'll read. <laughs> oh, and sh- and they're reading from Nephi. And I'm like, oh, there's a 50-50 chance that this is going to go bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so meantime, though, there's an old guy cleaning up after the parade who notices that there's a dog acting weird at the town's gazebo. So he goes to investigate. Mm. And he finds the bloody sash of Miss Brigham. That's buddy, dun, bloody dun, dun. sash, not bloody slash. This a totally different thing. No, like like her pageant sash yes, that exactly. she was wearing in the parade. So, yeah. yeah. Right. So to be clear, the killer murdered her, mm-hmm. shoved her like all the way under this porch. Yep. Then grabbed the sash and like left a little bit of it sticking out from under the porch so that a dog <laughs> could find it. Wait, wait. More than that, because there's like a, a, a fucking lattice that goes all the way around the bottom of the gazebo. So the killer removed the lattice, mm-hmm. moved the body into the center and then <laughs> replaced it, put the sash slightly out and then left. <laughs> Staple gunned it back yes, on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because then when Wes comes... Like he, you know, the guy runs to get the sheriff. Mm-hmm. Oh, my favorite is he runs and he interrupts. Like he opens up the bishop's office and it's full of people praying. And they all look up at him and he's like, Sheriff, we got a dead body. Well, yeah, we've got an <laughs> end like, day uh, body, Bayerf. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, well and so he goes down to see. He rips part of the gazebo lattice off, just straight up rips it off, just completely has no respect for crime scene analytics at all. Nope. Like rips it off, Mm -mm. crawl, like, you know, crawls on his belly, is like smelling the sash, like wiping it on his face, goes down, (laughs) sees the dead girl, just grabs a mess of her hair, like gets his skin cells all over. You're like, what are you doing? Don't touch her she's clearly dead stop touching her dead body don't taste it don't taste it yeah, okay. don't lick it guy don't lick it it's <laughs> like cheetah and human blood together all right yeah I knew it so then he goes to tell her family oh that god she's this, dead. Is, this is the best scene of the whole movie well it was this amazing hilarious. yeah so if you read hard. this as a comedy scene it's amazing because every because people keep going like oh do you want a cookie he's like no this is very serious how about a little bit he's like could you please just sit down and fucking shut up oh there's the phone okay right? do you know what this scene <laughs> reminds me of and i'm only going to reference it because i don't want to give it away to anybody who hasn't seen this glorious glorious film this reminds me of watching the mist have you guys seen the mist oh no. stephen king yes watching The Mist in horror at how bad this movie is. And then the whole thing is made 
imminently better by the last five minutes of this glorious film, which is the darkest, most twisted, most <laughs> fucked up thing you've ever seen. That's this scene. Like they go to tell this sad family that her daughter's dead. There's a comedy of errors. Mm. <laughs> the guy finds out on the phone. Right. While the bishop is sitting there having not yet told them. And then the tears. Well, and while he's halfway through, he's like, I have bad news about your daughter. And then the guy gets interrupted by a phone. Call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so good. And he's like, don't don't get it. Don't. Get it. But then he realizes what's happening. Wes is like, all right, I'll let whoever's on the phone tell you about the dead daughter. That I was a freebie. Drove all the fucking way out here for yeah. nothing. I guess. And then they literally weep. Yep. Like. For minutes, like Oscar worthy weeping is what's pretty happening. Pretty good weeping, man. It's very good. I wrote <laughs> this is this is very brutal and pretty good acting. Don't worry, we'll see some bad weeping too before it's all over. But this is pretty weep good weeping. All right, well, I'll tell you what. It seems like this could be a full blown fucking movie at this point. So it's probably best to pause now and let that feeling linger. But uh, we'll be back to disappoint you in a minute with even more Brigham City. You know, as a resident of a small, conservative, ultra-religious town in South Georgia, I really don't want to listen to anything anyone here has to say. And that's why I use Raycon wireless earbuds. Whether I'm ignoring a belligerent jerk at the coffee shop yelling about their mask mandate, or a lady giving out pamphlets about Peppa Pig being a harbinger of the apocalypse, I can do it in style and comfort with Raycon's improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. My new everyday earbuds from Raycon allow me to drown them out in three modes. There's pure mode for a podcast, audiobooks, and instrumental stuff, balance mode for rock and heavy metal, and bass mode for hip-hop and reggae. And there's even an all-new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings instead. Because let's face it, the belligerent customer yelling at his barista in South Georgia is probably armed. And with Raycon's built-in mic, you can even use them to call help. And Raycons have an 8-hour playtime and a 32-hour battery life, so they can handle all the insidious drivel this town can throw at them. And believe me, that's a lot of insidious drivel. Best of all, Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And they even come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. Right now, GAM listeners can even get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash GAM. That's buyraycon.com slash GAM to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash GAM. Well, sister officer, why don't you read the next passage? Uh-oh, I'm actually not a Mormon, so I'd rather not. Well, well, you can certainly read, can't you? I mean... Yeah, but this is like your religion. So I feel like maybe it's best to leave it up to you. Oh, but we'd just be honored if you read it for us, though. Honored? Look, I'm just going to stare at you and make this increasingly awkward until you say yes. But I'm going to smile the whole time so it's not as obvious that I'm being an asshole. How very Mormon of you. All right. Um, Let's see here. <clears throat> Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the good Lord did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. Oh, I am suddenly way more uncomfortable. Oh, please continue. <clears throat> okay. And thus saith the Lord God, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people, Save, they shall repent their iniquities. I'm sorry. Is this book saying we should hate black people until they apologize for what, like their melanin? I, yeah, uh -huh. just two more verses, if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. I really I'm mind. I'm only going to stop staring at you if you finish it. <clears throat> okay. And cursed shall be the seed of him that mixeth with their seed, for they shall be cursed even with the same cursing. And the Lord spake it, and it was done. You sure this is your holy book and not Mein Kampf? Oh, this isn't even the most racist passage. It's just the one that most lent itself to a series of comedic escalations. The next verse is about how lazy they are. Oh my God, that can't be true. No, no, it shouldn't be true, but it is. See, this is how you make a fucking serial killer. What? <clears throat> Nothing. And we're back for more of this shit. You can tell shit's getting serious now because we're going to open up on Wes deputizing Wilford Brimley. Oh, yeah. Get it, Wilford. 
get that mustache. His bad. I want his tagline to be, I'm not getting too old for this shit. Right? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> yes. But we see that things are going nuts. The, the reporters want to talk to Wes and the mayor needs to talk to him, but he's too busy copping to do, you know, deal with any of that shit. Mm. And of course, the writer has no idea, apparently, what you would do if there was a murder. <laughs> Uh, and he wrote this anyway yeah right so maybe this is a mormon town thing and not a cop thing but this sheriff is like i need you all to get all the mormons and canvas the town with them and we just like talk to everyone and they're like all right yep we'll just have the mormons talk to everybody well they have them at this point they have them putting out flyers oh yeah we're just putting out flyers yet do we even know what they say no, I feel like it's got to be something like, if you're the serial killer, you have to tell us this rule works both ways. <laughs> Maybe. Are you a cheetah? Please report. <laughs> have you seen any suspicious cheetahs in your neighborhood? <laughs> if so, claw this box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and do you guys notice that Meredith at this point is like, I need your permission to look at some files. Like, why would she need that? She's the FBI. No, you do that. You do that FBI jurisdiction speech there. Yeah, yeah definitely. She's literally like, I want to learn more about deaths in your town. And he's like, OK, like, it's just again, another pointless scene. Nobody ever dies here. OK, man, you said that Which before. You, it's not. Yeah, that's not. Also, oh, my favorite, my favorite. So the gazebo, right? We've just seen that this like dead body was pulled out of the gazebo. Murder photographer earlier was like at Bishop's office going, never make me look at a dead body again. I hate you for making me do that. <laughs> and then he's right there at the scene, just snapping photos. Well, yeah. <laughs> so the we, very next day. Right. So what we, we eventually see that he's taking pictures of like the little vigil that they made by the gazebo for murdered girl or whatever. But yeah, this is the first of many linger on photo, Matt, Steve creepily for a little while and go, eh, eh, with the camera. Yeah. There's a lot of that. <laughs> Who's the killer? Is he the killer? Yeah. He lives across the street from the sheriff. At one point, the sheriff just looks out the window and creepy Steve guy is like slowly closing his shit. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Yep. It's like a it's Simpsons to be like episode. A dark moment. <laughs> He's just like, twist, twist, twist. Wow, this is taking longer than I thought. Twist, 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 twist. <laughs> oh, I went the wrong way. God, I'll just I'll just leave it that way. Yeah, so we get West driving along and damn it, if the local serial killer isn't all over the news, it's like, why wouldn't he be? But he goes to see Ralph the foreman. Oh, yes. I love this part. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like Ralph the foreman is going on and on about how he has this guy who ended up stealing from him. And it's his fault because he didn't do a background check. He literally says, I deserved to get robbed because I didn't do a background mm -hmm. check. I don't think he knows what the word deserved means. <laughs> that's not what it means. He got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's how that works. But we do see this scene recapitulated later. Yeah. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, he even says, you know, I do background checks. Not very Christ-like of me, I know. Oh, yeah. What was that? What did that even mean? Is that not Christ-like? Yeah, I thought Jesus loved background checks. Trust but verify. Yeah. Reagan yeah. said that. Yeah, exactly. Basically Reagan Jesus. was all about some Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. And I also love the whole concept here, which is like, yeah, there's been a lot of murders. It was probably one of them immigrants you hired. It's not going to be one of our locals. They're all white and delightsome. True. Yeah, very right? true. Although, weirdly, you would think that they would have made look at all the churches abs guy a brown immigrant, but they didn't. They chose to make the member of the crew that was the most out-of-towner mm -hmm. whiter than white. Yeah, no, you're right. You're so right. that was kind of a weird, like... Not very Mormon of them. Oh, because probably somebody gave them a note and they were like, guys, you can't be this overtly racist. Right, so yeah. Like, right, so, right, yeah. We'll, we'll make him white. That's We've cool. already got Ralph being the one. You know, We went straight to him right after there was a murder. <laughs> we went to <laughs> yeah, the only yeah. black guy in town yeah. to talk to him. Literally, <laughs> first thing that happened. Yes. And, and of course, as they leave, we watch evil abs atheist guy like watch them leave creepily. He's like, I get a creepy soundtrack, too. Right. Yeah. You get a creepy soundtrack, too. Mm -hmm. And you're a red herring as well. So, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, so we cut back to the station where Peg is pulling files for Meredith and filling her in on Wes's tragic backstory. Oh, my God. It's so sad. Like, I was like, this is horrible. 
I almost cried when she was telling her about his horrible backstory. It's well, so sad. So here's the thing, though. In a Christian movie, like everyone who has a dead anything lost them to either cancer or a car accident. So as soon as I saw that he had both a dead <laughs> wife and a dead son, I'm like, oh, car accident. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I, yeah. I had it pretty much pegged. But apparently he was driving during the accident. And that's why he has the brace on his leg. He was so severely injured. And he was in a coma for eight days. And for some reason, they were like, "Eh, he's basically dead. Let's go ahead and have the funeral. (laughs) (laughs) He wakes up up to them already in the ground. Yeah. Feels like you'd wait more than eight days on that, right? I don't know. Well, that's what Meredith says. She's like, really? That that seems kind of fucked up. They're like, we were sure he was going to (laughs) die. Well, he's up nine days into a coma, right? Do you do another funeral at that point for the guy who wakes up? You would right, think like that's yeah, because you could just person. tell them, you know, you go, hey, no, we sure didn't bury them, <laughs> right? We didn't yeah. bury them, did we, Dave? <laughs> I mean, because really, who was the funeral for otherwise? Like the weird child deputy? Because do you remember how earlier when they visited her grave, he was like, really loved your wife. She was, she was a good one. She, yeah, she was the only one that would listen to my missionary stories. Yeah, I was like, when I was weird. one. Apparently. Yeah, <laughs> right. I was like, it's like, how old are these people? How They're long ago confused. did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> Nine days ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at any rate, so and then so we fill in that backstory and then we go, we watch the ironic priesthood putting out pamphlets. <gasps> I love this part because this whenever they say ironic, because it's like Aaron, like the dude's name was Aaron. So mm-hmm. it's the ironic priest, A-A-R-O-N-I-C. It sounds like he's saying ironic. Absolutely. Like it's the ironic yeah. priest. I thought it was going to be priests going around being like, look, we're being Mormon, aren't we? Yeah, like look Mormon we are, right? Right? I have a shirt that says Mormon. Just says Mormon. It's just a t-shirt. Right? That's so funny. Mormonism. Okay, so now it's time for the sheriff to enact his plan. Once again, the writer, who is also the director, who is also the sheriff, has no idea how a cop would go about trying to find a serial killer or how a movie writer would depict that. (laughs) So we're setting up what will, I promise you, be the dumbest goddamn plan you've ever encountered in a movie that was trying to be serious. But in order to do that, he needs the help of the guy who owns the local bar. Now, he's the Mormon fucking bishop. Obviously, he does not have a good relationship with the guy that runs the local bar. Right. It's and they make it almost seem like this is a town of 150 people, seven of whom smoke cigarettes and drink beer and hang out at this <laughs> bar. And that's the whole town. Well, it's all those construction workers. Yeah. yeah. The other 143 people are all good Mormons. Right. And maybe one or two of them are inactive. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Jack Mormons. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's the makeup of this town. Yeah. So, yeah, but the sheriff has to strong arm the bar owner and his arms aren't all that strong. So it takes a takes a little work. Yeah. Yeah. And he's basically like, you're going to help us find this murderer, because if there's a murder in my town, he's going to drink alcohol. Yeah, exactly. He must hang, out at, hang out at your bar. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I don't like the implications of that. But and the bar. bartender, the bartender is just like, no, I hate you. I don't like <laughs> yeah, you as yeah. a person. Good. You're shitty. And he's like, I'll arrest you for no reason. Yeah. And he's like, all right. You will. You're a white cop. He was like, what's the magic word? And he goes, probation. <laughs> it's like, what the yeah. fuck? It's like, you're seedy. Stop resisting. Yeah, yeah, you're seedy. I could get you on some shit. <laughs> like, you have what? tattoos and smoke cigarettes. So. Yeah, you must. Be. I'm sure you're a criminal. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then, okay, so what we're supposed to be learning here, and this is actually, I think, the un- the the message that the movie is trying to send is that once worldly things like serial killers show up in your town, everyone stops trusting everyone and you lose your innocence, right? You have to be wise like a serpent and peaceful like a dove. <gasps> Oh, that's the point of that scene. Right. So we get this scene where everybody's like <laughs> looking at each other like, are you the serial killer? I did killer? not get that either we at all. I know. We- well, right. Because because <laughs> the guy that we see is Photo Matt Steve, who's creepy as all fuck. And we're like, oh, is this just another Photo Matt Steve is a creepy guy scene with the music box soundtrack? Yep. That's what we got going here. Oh, and to be clear, in this scene, it's not actually the the bishop that sees him. It's a whole new family. Yes. 
who we've never met before yep. sitting down to dinner and we're like, what, who, who are these people? And the, the dad is like nine feet tall <laughs> and he has the most intense Jared from Subway pedo vibes. Oh my God. Doesn't he though? Yeah. Ever seen. He's like <laughs> sits down with his family of like seven and they're, you know, saying their, their prayers. And then he looks across and he sees photo Matt Steve weirdly. It looks like, Watergate, like he's in his house, but he's got yeah. all these file boxes, <laughs> right? With like a with like a like a flashlight, he's like reading files, <laughs> and I feel like he gives him a look in his eye. There's like a twinkle, kind of like nobody will ever know the secrets we have between. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, well then I need to close my blinds, or my wife is going to see that twinkle. So yes. Yeah, so. And then, well, and then we're one more quick reminder of how on edge the town is. We see an old man on his porch going, all right, kids, have a good night. And then we zoom in on him having a gun. And it's just like, you guys think that's safe, don't you? You think that's a good thing. But don't that's you? the oh, thing. This, this, it, it's obviously some Republican made this movie, but the town full of gun owners can't seem to protect innocent girls from a serial so killer weird. in the plot of their movie. <laughs> so know. weird. It's almost like it's all a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> And then we cut to this scene where Wes and Terry are going to do target practice in a field. But mm. it takes <laughs> like the scene opens up like the two of them are going to face off in an old timey duel. Yeah. Weird opening. But yeah, we have to learn that Wes is not a very good shot. <laughs> No, he's also not good at telling a story, which <laughs> goes so goddamn badly. Just out of nowhere, he's like, up of nothing, Terry. I have a story about uh, deer hunting. I uh, killed a rabbit. It's kind of fucked up. Now I'm a cop. So, you know, <laughs> people only. And, and <laughs> Terry just doesn't respond because he's like, oh, this is a really bad story. I hope you just peter out and like we move on. But he doesn't. He's like, I really enjoyed killing that rabbit. Yeah, that part was so weird. He's like, I had a taste for blood. <laughs> I, had to check, I had to check myself. And you're cool. like, wait, what the fuck? I left it there to die slowly in the dirt. And Terry's just doing the like, hand twirly thing of like, all right, wrap it up, wrap it up. So, on, yeah. <laughs> okay, but I have to point out Terry's response. Look, he goes, so did you eat the rabbit? <laughs> I'm like, know, right? that's such a weird fucking, I know for like hunters, maybe that makes, that is such a weird fucking, so when you killed it, did you devour its heart? <laughs> <laughs> so now, but the other thing that, that is key to this that we have to learn that will never, ever matter in the movie is that Terry is a very good shot. Right. Oh, the, yeah, the 12 year old right. is a very good shot, has a lot of confidence <laughs> in his yeah. gunning yeah. abilities. OK, so now we, we cut to the bar where Wes has a plan cooking. Now, we're about to reveal what that is. This but is first, so stupid. well, but, but first, I want to talk about their musical guest who they are way too proud of. <laughs> Is this like somebody famous? Right, the guy who's singing a song called I Play the Banjo While Playing a Mandolin? <laughs> that guy? And it's got a very smash mouth quality to it. Yeah, it's very yeah. Smash mouth. <laughs> yeah, this is 2001. Yes. That, that makes sense. Yes. But then, okay, so musical guest aside, we have to cut to this ridiculous right. goddamn plan that the sheriff has. Yeah. Don't, does this make sense at all? Not in any goddamn <laughs> no. way. Okay. So first we find out that Peg, the, she's the dispatcher at, yeah. at the yeah. Yeah. police station. She's going to dress up as a waitress at this bar as bait. And I thought like as bait for the serial killer. But we find nope. out that she's actually just going to be collecting beer bottles and pint glasses because they're going to get the fingerprints of the people at that bar that night. Right. Now, keep in mind, they do <laughs> not reasons. have... A fingerprint from the crime scene to test this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have like claw scratch marks. But right. Like, yeah. Unless you see, a che <laughs> you see a cheetah in the bar, you're just like, okay, well, that's have, the cheetah. They have toe bean prints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're so right. This is so stupid. It makes Everything no about sense. this makes no sense. And no. my favorite, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite is when she brings back glasses. She has a tray full of glasses. She brings them back to Wilford Brimley, who's in the back, who's starting mm -hmm. to sort things. And she goes, okay, this one's from Steve. This one's from Joe. This one's from Marshall. And this one's from John. And he goes, how are we going to keep these straight? And then the other guy goes, we don't have to. 
We're just going to put them in the fingerprint machine. Right. And it's right. like, no, but you need to know whose fingerprint it was. <laughs> well, because if it comes back, it'll come back with a name, right? Oh, so, you're right. Because at this point, I didn't realize they weren't matching them to the right. crime scene. No, I thought they were matching, matching them to the crime scene. And anything. I'm like, if you just mix them all up, your whole plan is thwarted, you fucking idiot. Right. But <laughs> the only plan they have here is they're going to try to. So obviously, if it's a serial killer, it's obviously an alcohol drinker. So you just go to the bar, you, you fingerprint everybody and look to see who has a violent criminal record and there's your serial killer that is legitimately the plan yeah no seriously they're just like fingerprint <laughs> equals we arrest you that's a thing in policing so we're doing that and and they're taking ever they're not like getting one bottle from each person they're taking literally every single beer bottle and glass yeah. right but even though they have a mole on the inside the waitress could literally be like i don't need another one from him i already got right. one from him but instead also, she's like i'll just keep collecting them why yep. the fuck did they need an undercover waitress like the other waitresses were already gonna bring back bottles <laughs> you're right yep. you're right and anybody who's at that bar is gonna be like that's weird that all of a sudden the dispatcher from police station is a waitress today. and that actually happened <laughs> yes that guy was like where's your name tag and she was like uh i'm new and he goes yeah and then he goes i happen to be looking for a new girl to murder <laughs> yeah like, oh, well, that's, 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 that's the eight that's abs that's atheist abs that yeah. was abs yeah and she's yeah. like this is suspicious i should probably right. put a red piece of tape on his glass <laughs> and then and then wilford rimley takes all these glasses, which, by the way, if you've ever worked in a restaurant or you know anything about how, you know, a zero sum game works, you know that there aren't endless glasses. Right. You have to watch them <laughs> and reuse them. <laughs> but they don't. So, nope. so they have these racks of glasses and empty beer bottles. And then Wilford Brimley comes back to what's the what's the deputy's name again? Uh, Terry. Terry. Terry, he comes back to Terry and he's like, loaded up the back of the truck. Also loaded up the back of your car. Sorry about the fucking smell. Because what? by the way, can you yeah. imagine how bad that would smell? Holy shit. You oh would be God. so drunk just sitting in that car. Your car yeah. would smell after three detailings. Like right. there's no way you could get that smell out. Honestly, that's like a nostalgic positive scent in my head right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I bartended for so long and I also oh. was on the other side of the bartending yeah. for so long. Yeah, it just right, all... right, right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, bar water is literally the most puke inducing smell that I can. Well, I mean, it of. includes puke. Often. <laughs> well, yeah, right. True. Right. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's nice. It brings bar me back. Water, simpler times. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. So they, but, so they get all of the bottles. So they're heading back to the police station. Wes stops to let everybody know that he thinks his plan is a very good idea. But then, okay. Late that night, we have to get Meredith getting a flat tire. And she's out driving <laughs> Meredith, the FBI agent. Right. Yeah. And damn it, if her tire iron isn't the wrong size for her lug nuts. Yeah. How does that even happen? Why would that be the case? They, <laughs> I mean, they going. have different sizes of the zone, but you would you would clearly have your your you need that in your car. You check that right away. You get a new car. You get an old car. You match those up. You change the tire. Well, also, the car comes with a tire. Like, she didn't have one of those fancy ones that's like a cross, like she upgraded. She had the shitty right. one that comes with your car. Why did her car come with the wrong I, tire? I think iron? it was supposed to be a rental, it's, and they gave them the wrong one at the rental place or whatever. But at, the, at first, it's just like, why wouldn't you just pick a normal problem for her to have? Oh, fuck. This is just a really big Allen wrench from Ikea. This is nothing. <laughs> Yeah, or like, I don't know, why didn't she just not have a jack? Or the jack right. was broken, or, yeah. you know, any or other the reason. Of the can... fucking spare was flat, or something or like that. Or it was yeah. missing, like there was no spare, that would have been easy. Right, there you go. But yeah, but so just as, as she's realizing that, Ralph the Foreman shows up, and he also has creepy background music. And, oh, right. And he walks right up to her, like, menacingly for some, just for no reason at all, but He's just like, oh, he notices that she's scary. He's like, sorry, was I doing a, a scary walk? And she's like, yeah, kind of. That was a scary walk. You're doing a scary walk. Yeah. And then he goes back to his trunk. He's like, I think I have something to help you with this. And he like fingers all of these tools in his trunk. And he goes for the tire iron. He goes, maybe I should use this ice pick. No, yeah. no, no. It's a tire, <laughs> no, it's a tire iron. Tire, tire iron. Tire iron. <laughs> like, ring, 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 ring. No, wrong tool. No. Wrong tool. That's different. <laughs> Why would I bring a chainsaw over there? I don't know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm being, I'm really being scary right now for no reason. Sorry. 
Okay. Oh, it, on top of that, all of my stuff is bathed in a creepy red light, too, for whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but like, then he just helps her change her fucking tire is the scene. Right. Because clearly at this point in the movie, they're going, oh, we've forgotten to set up that there should be red herrings. Right. Yeah. So now we need to make sure so that do you do like think- five in a row. Yeah. In like five minutes. Yeah. yeah. That's right. all it is with pop scares. And she almost murders him, right? Did she, did, yeah. Doesn't she take her gun out yeah. at that point? Yeah. Uh-huh. And she's like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I was going to shoot you because, you know, well, you did the chainsaw thing, but mostly because you're, you know, so, but you know, no, no, you're fixing my tire. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so and then we cut to Wilford Brimley. He's stopping at the five and dime on his way home with all the bottles loaded in the back of his truck. And the clerk is adorable neighbor with the fence from the beginning. I was starting to think she wasn't going to come back into the movie. I'd missed her. Yeah, yeah. So she, and, and her and Wilford have a little back and forth. He wants a pack of smokes, but she knows that he quit smoking and she don't want to sell them to him. And he's a good Mormon. He shouldn't smoke cigarettes. Right. right. Yep, yep, yep. And he's just like, give me. No, I'm buying one now. And she's like, well, you want porn, too? I'm going to tell the bishop. He's like, <laughs> OK, well, now I do want the porn. Now, well, you might as well give me a fucking way, porn. Then I want a cigarette. And, yeah, and I want porn. Fine. So he goes outside with his new cigarettes to his really cool truck by Very the way cool. i'm Very obsessed cool. with this truck and he like goes to use the cigarette lighter or like he you know looks around he has no cigarette lighter think about how long it takes to walk out to mm-hmm. your car mm-hmm. look for a lighter realize you don't have one and then walk back in in this amount of time the store is completely disheveled the girl is missing <laughs> and he's like mm, something well, happened here well, more than that the girl is is has been tied up and duct taped Right, because yeah, he walks like right works back in. He's like, oh, he fast. walks out. He pats his pockets. He goes, oh, this isn't going to be easy. He walks right back in, and now she and he can hear her like straining against the duct tape over her mouth or whatever. Now, yeah, we don't like we know who the killer turns out to be. I, I just want to point out, like that character would have known Wilford Brimley was at this fucking store. He would have known that goddamn truck. So this was like the plan. <laughs> yeah. It was a plan to like run around this this convenience store over ten or twenty seconds, like the Flash, and <laughs> use duct tape, and know that Wilfred Brimley would have exactly that much time between finding out he forgot his light. Le- How would he plan the not having a lighter part? I don't know. <laughs> but that's what he does. Picked his pocket earlier and took his Zippo yeah. or something. So he grabs Jamie, the clerk lady, he brings her to the back somewhere, ties her up. Wilford Brimley comes back in and he sees that like a struggle may have happened. And he's like, Jamie, did you get mad at all the candy and bleed? At the same time? <laughs> you hiding a cheetah back there? <laughs> <laughs> Weird. So, yeah, but he finds her all duct taped and then a, a hand comes in from off camera and shoots him in the head. Oh, yeah. This part actually surprised. I was like, fuck, they just killed Wilford Brimley. I, I didn't see it coming. Did not see I don't it see it coming at all. They show it's actually kind of a cool scene. Like it's actually halfway decent filmmaking where he can't quite hear. And so they they zoom in on his um, hearing aid. Mm-hmm. And then you start to hear her like whimpering. I mean, it sounds like a crying baby, but maybe that's what it sounds like to a hearing impaired person. I'm not sure. And so he's like, oh, shit, something's going on. So he goes to the back. But because he can't hear, he doesn't hear the guy sneak up on him. And it's just oh. gun to head dead. And I was like, holy shit. It was again, it was like the mist. Guys, you got to watch the mist. Okay. Like it just takes you by surprise. And you're like, that took a badass turn. I like, yeah, I laughed actually a lot at the very end of the mist. That was fun. Me too. And and uh, other people I was with were horrified. I was like, <laughs> yes, that was so redeeming. And they were like, what just happened? <laughs> we're not comfortable with your reaction to this movie, Kara. What's going on? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. It was super considerate of this movie to time out its murders the same way that we generally time out our breaks. So I guess we can pause there. But first, <laughs> let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will Wes ever find a clue? Will there be anything to tip off an observant viewer as to who the killer is? <laughs> Will the answer to the who done it essentially be drawn out of a goddamn hat? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the decaffeinated conclusion of <laughs> Brigham City. <laughs> Fellas, the sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and wardrobe. Your fit needs to be versatile, blending timeless style and comfort so that you look as good as you feel. And for that, 
There's Cuts Clothing. Glad you put on a definition or I'd be asking what sport of business meant. Cuts shirts, polos, hoodies, and crew sweatshirts are made for the man who works hard, plays hard, and never settles for less. I feel like, statistically speaking, they sometimes settle for less. Nope, never. Like, if the restaurant is out of their first choice? Never, never. It says so right here in the copy. Huh. What else does the copy say? Take a plain tea, but make it Tony Stark. Dead? No, I, I can see why you think that, but I think they mean, like, in the sense of bleeding-edge fabric technology. Is 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 that a Tony Stark thing? The bleeding-edge technology is, yes. Yeah. See, in 2016, Cuts founder Steve Borelli set out to create clothes for every occasion the modern man faces. He started by reinventing the t-shirt. The end result? What GQ magazine calls the only shirt worth wearing. Kind of sucks that we discovered it so recently, then. Right? But their signature buttery soft Pika Pro Tri-Blend T is a bold new take on the classic design, combining the ultimate blend of high-quality cotton, polyester, and spandex. Are you sure it's not just the penultimate blend? Positive. Each piece of Cuts clothing is designed with custom-engineered fabrics expertly graded for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. Uh, like a towel in the Hitchhiker's Guide universe. Exactly. It's not just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's office leisure apparel for the sport of business. And you can get 15% off your first order by going to CutsClothing.com slash GAM. That's CutsClothing.com slash GAM for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Cuts Clothing. They're way better at making clothes than they are at writing copy. Yep. All right, team. We got to catch this serial killer. I need all the beer bottles from Patty's Pub tonight. You got to collect them. You got it, boss. Wait. Sorry. How's that helpful? We'll, we'll get the fingerprints and we'll, we'll find out all the criminals from that. We'll find out all the people who already have a record. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We would have them all. Well, the people who already have a record who show up at Patty specifically tonight. That. That's everyone. That's everyone. Well, this is a Mormon town. You, you think everyone goes to the bar every night, boss? It's, yes, apparently yes. What if the serial killer goes to a different bar? <laughs> yeah, getting us off track. We collect all the bottles and then we run the prints. We're cops. That's a cop thing, right? Run, run the prints. I've heard well, that. No, running the prints is a, a cop thing. Yeah, I guess I just. Do you know what it means, though? Yes, yes, I know what that means. Yes, I do. You put you put the prints. Don't say into the computer. In, into the computer. Oh, and no. then don't it, say it tells would, you the serial killer. It would tell you the serial killer. Please don't oh, interrupt like okay. that. Okay. That's just words. Just just get me the prints. We're doing this. Okay, fine. Fine. Wait, 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 wait. One last thing before you go. Stu. 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 Come on. Just one can you say it just one time? Do it one time. No. Come on, come on. I love when you do this. A absolutely not. Please. Please do, though, please. Please do please. it. <sighs> Fine. Diabetes. <laughs> yeah, he said it. <laughs> he said it. Classic. He said it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I, hate, I hate you guys. I'm Wilford Brimley. <laughs> My mustache. Diabetes. In a very walrus -in style. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our heroes following up on that dumbass beer bottle plan down at the station. Yep. Right. <laughs> One guy comes in and he's like, all right, 437 bottles, 437 prints. And I was like, that feels wrong. I yeah, don't think I don't think <laughs> what the numbers would be. What I that. love, too, is that they've had like a whole new murder and kidnapping. We, J J we don't find Jamie's body at this point, so we just know that she's missing. Like, And their plan is still the fucking beer bottle thing. Like, All of this new evidence doesn't sway you at all. I know. There's nothing here to find. And he's literally like, like, so Wes is literally like, Jamie's life is on the line. We need to wake people up. We need to call people and get them to help us. And she's like, it's the middle of the night. We can't do that. He's like, do it anyway. Her life is on the line. And then he's like, I'm just going to go take a walk. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to stand know? outside, <laughs> stare into the middle distance no for a little urgency bit. urgency <laughs> with any of the actual police work. Let's just wake up the town for no reason and then just stand around for a while. Yeah. Well, the movie also addresses its own problem here. It's like <laughs> what, what, this whole fingerprinting idea is stupid. And the movie asks itself about that. One of the cops is like, is this even admissible in court? And another <laughs> one says no. But what would they be proving in court right. with those prints? Nothing. There's no 
print to match it to at the crime scene. <laughs> That's amazing. Exactly. They're just proving that somebody was at a bar. Yeah. <laughs> and that they illegally took their Right. Well, right. exactly. And that's just the thing. If they did get some from it, then they've just given the lawyer some potential ammunition to fuck with them over. Yeah. It's stupid in like eight ways. And even in the movie, never leads anywhere. Right. But we will soon learn that Wes gives no shits about human civil liberty. No, exactly. Like right. None, <laughs> right. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, though, we get to later that night. Meredith comes in and makes a late play at Love Interest. Oh, yeah, that was what was happening here. I, I think maybe this was supposed to be a love interest that was developing throughout the film. But like Wes is such a bad actor and Meredith <laughs> is such a bad actor that they just never yeah. bothered to pull it off. <laughs> oh, was this supposed to be chemistry between Wes and Meredith? I yes. think I get that at all. I think so, too, because they have this weird conversation. Like, first of all, he's like, are you Mormon? Are you from Utah? And she's like, Duh, clearly I'm not. I wear black. I'm from Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, right, New York. And then she says, literally, he, she's like, I'm from Manhattan. And he's like, yeah, what's that like? And she's like, it's nice. And I'm like, I've never heard somebody call Manhattan nice. It is. <laughs> That's the weirdest way to describe that city. There are city. so many There's better adjectives. So many better. Yeah. It's like the weirdest I think she was word. just going for like way better than right here than where here, I am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she does say that. And then he's like, Goes on this little tear with her about, oh, you probably think I'm so naive. You think I'm innocent. You think we Mormons. We don't have any life experience. We have our own experience. We have so much experience. It's dripping out of our dicks. And I'm like, what is experience a euphemism well, for in this conversation? What I love so much about that dumbass thing is that he's like, you know, people think we're naive because we don't have the big city experience. It's like, we think you're naive because you profess belief in a book where Bronze Age people made a transit Atlantic crossing and a wooden submarine, dude. Big city experience can really be left out of this entirely. And you're still a naive fucking idiot. Oh, and that's not even the worst of it. It's like you believe in that. And then you believe some schmo 150 years ago or however the fuck long it was, was like, oh, I read the word of God and I translated it, even though I don't speak the language. And they go, oh, could you do that again for us? And he's like, nope. no, I can't. <laughs> re this reform Egyptian is a different dialect of Egyptian, actually, as it turns out. I had a stroke since then. So um. I, can't do, I can't do that anymore. It's <laughs> weird. He actually repeats a few details from the Book of Mormon and, and describes it. And then he's like, you're naive. I believe every word of this. He actually says yeah. that. Like, <laughs> and then he says, we have our own idea of what's dumb and naive. Right. Yeah. It's no, so I good. think you're naive for believing in your dumb evolution. How about that? <laughs> Yeah. She's like, this is clearly not going to work out. I'm just going to go to the hotel. Yeah, now. I'm not going to be the love interest as... You do your own research about evolution? <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. So that morning, dozens of people who Peg apparently called at 2.30 a.m. have gathered at the town square to help form a fucking Mormon posse. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what Wes is going to do with this unprecedented amount of manpower. He's going to have them go to every house in town and search it. <laughs> illegally. <laughs> illegally is all fucking hell. And we're not not just illegally, unconstitutional. You're right. right. Yeah. Like exactly. Talking, yeah. This is not Mormon law anymore. There's federal jurisdiction here. Like, this is not okay. Which is probably why Meredith needed to not be there. Because yeah. she would have been like, yeah, you cannot do this. You're not allowed this. to. None of, the, none of this. None of this. <laughs> I liked how everybody kind of was, like, deflated by this. He's like, all right, it's going to be just like the old days, right? You go knock on doors and everybody fucking hates you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. All Just right. like being yeah, a missionary. That. Yeah, pedo guy, nine foot tall pedo guy's like, but I have to be at work by nine. <laughs> Right. <laughs> funny thing, he's like, that's not happening to. Yeah, and then he's like, nobody's going to work today. Jamie's life is more important than your job. And so I wanted one guy to be like, I'm a fucking surgeon. So yeah, it's like exactly. that's it's like, five to one against at this point. I think we need my to. schedule today, but uh okay. And then he literally is like, and by the way, if anyone asserts their constitutionally mandated right to disallow illegal search and seizure, let me know so I can come muscle them up. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and let me know. I love how he slipped into the fugitive by accident for a second. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I want a hard target search every farm. No, that's fugitive. Okay. <laughs> Closet. 
every corner that's different Bathroom. i'm doing i'm not yeah buddy system we need a buddy system also yeah yeah right well unless of course somebody tells you they're not allowed to you're not allowed to look in their house in which case split up that's his goddamn yeah, yeah. find the bad guy <laughs> Get rid of the buddy system. Yes, that breaks exactly. Down. No, he literally system time goes, breaks yeah, down goes, exactly when we need it not to. All right. At which case, one person wait on the lawn. The other person get in your car and drive to the police station. Get me and I'll drive there. And then the first time this happens in the movie, the guy goes, I'm not doing that shit. I'm just going to call him on my cell he's phone. Got, he's got a fucking cell phone now. <laughs> why didn't like, he know he had a cell phone? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. So they head out to use all of this goddamn manpower to check old lady Westerly's footlocker. Think about what a dumbass fucking thing to do this would be if somebody's life was legitimately on the line. Well, we have to check the old lady's house too, because she could be the serial killer. Yeah. God. And she's like, we're not, you're not doing that. And he's like, well, do you want me to get a warrant? And it's like, he doesn't have grounds for a warrant. Right. How would you get a fucking, yeah. So There's no imminent domain here. There's nothing she did to make them think that her house needs to be searched. Right, no, it's the next house on the road is literally <laughs> the plan. And so this is uh, Photo Matt Steve's mom. They go to Photo Matt Steve's mom's house and they're like, we got to search your house. And she's like, the hell you do? And they're like, all right, we're getting the fucking sheriff. We're, we're calling in the posse. It's just the weirdest thing. It's like, on the one hand, they're like, we love Murica. Murica gives us our rights to independence. And then they're like, the minute that no longer fits our narrative, let's go Gestapo. Yep. And you're like, wait, you, what is your ideology? <laughs> I'm very confused by what kind of world you want to live in. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, though, this is exactly how Joseph Smith would have handled the serial killer. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, other than possibly be him. But yeah, other than that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Mm. He murdered way more people than the serial killer in this movie. That's true. You're right. Yeah. Well, bloody Brigham sure as fuck did. So <laughs> photo Matt Steve, they bring photo Matt Steve to his mom's house and they're like, make your mom let us search her house. And he's like, okay, mom, you have to let him search us. And it's like, they, that doesn't, that doesn't count, right? That doesn't help you now. It's her fucking house. Right. He just clearly lives in the basement there. Right. Yeah. So as the cops are searching the house, they come across the locked closet and they're like, photo Matt, Steve, open your locked closet. He's like, I don't want to. They're like, you got to. They like slam him up against the fucking wall. And he's like, all right, man, the key is in the cup that's immediately next to the padlock. I thought you were a fucking cop. You could have found it. But OK, there it is. <laughs> it's in the, the key hiding chalice that's right. right next to this thing that he closed the curtain over. As the cops walked in, he like runs over to this yes. one spot and pulls his curtains. And they're like, it's not in here. Hey, man. Yeah. Uh, we're going to need you to open that back up, obviously. And to be clear, at this point, Photo Matt Steve and Photo Matt Steve's mom are weeping. Yep. They're weeping in shame about what they're about to open up and see in this closet. So they're literally playing it up like there's a fucking dead body in this closet. Yes. Yes, they are. Like but they're there's not. really, really upset by the fact that the cops are about to open this closet door. So they open the closet. There's nothing there immediately. But then the cop notices there's a false back to this closet. And he opens the false back to the closet to reveal <gasps> porn. <laughs> it's, it's not like child porn or illegal no, in any way. Just regular no, it's medium girls porn. Girls gone wild stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like just v yeah it's like vhs home delivery yes! tapes and dirty magazines you guys it's skin <laughs> books and i know what those are now <laughs> <laughs> i i think you guys planned this entire movie for me just to see this scene didn't you i feel so loved oh god i was looking at it going like oh y'all remember the porn layer I, I, did you have i had a porn layer it's very sweet, his little porn collection. And he's so ashamed. Yes, it's... He's acting like it's a dead body, even yeah. after they... Re he's not like, see, it's just porn. He's literally like, I sinned. Please right. don't hate me. And the bishop <laughs> knows about my porn. And what's more... Everyone else treats this like it's a dead body. They yeah, take yeah. him down to the station oh, over God. the porn. On what grounds? Like, they're very confused about what laws are in this movie. Yeah, th they don't find a dead body. No. They know there's now a serial killer, not this guy, out and about doing serial killing. And they're like, 
All right, well, we got to spend a bunch of time perp walking this guy past a bunch of children in town. Yes! Bringing him back to the station. When everyone knows there's a serial killer in the fucking... This is so fucked up of a thing to do to photo it's Matt so Steve. bad. Photo Matt Steve, by the way, will not turn out to be the fucking killer. Of course not. He's just a sad guy with porn. Photo Matt Steve has a massive lawsuit on oh, his hands yeah. right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Photomat Steve owns Brigham City now. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. He's the porn king. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So we're back at the station. We've got you know fucking Photomat Steve sweating under the hot lights. But meanwhile, they're running the very last of those fingerprints that they got from the beer bottles. They haven't gotten anything from it yet. They've used an awful lot of manpower that could be used on literally anything else to do this, but they've got one last one to run, and it just so happens that this one is Abs, the guy from the construction site that had his own creepy music and was a herring that was colored red. Anyway. Yeah, wouldn't they have been like, let's run that? You know how he was like, I'm looking for a new girl to rape and kill. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, you know hmm. what? Let's just prioritize that one. Yeah, right maybe now. run that one first. Play, like put, put a red rubber band around the neck or something on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But he has a rap sheet. They're like, oh, look, he's got a rap sheet. It could be him. But the fucking one thing on it is possession of marijuana. But Peg has a plan. She knows exactly what to do. They have to pray. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. so they all get down on the knees and she's like, Dear God, literally all we could think of was I bet the alcohol drinkers did it and that other dude had too much porn to not be a serial killer. Obviously, we could use some help here. So whatever you got, perhaps. Amen. And of course, Meredith is there and you know, she, she'll bow her head with him, but she's not going to say fucking amen. She's not. Yeah, I'm glad Meredith did not get converted in this film. Yeah, right. She was like, yeah, I'm. Still not Mormon. I'm just <laughs> yeah, gonna, so gonna I'm, get out of here. I'm, I'm, what I'm, I hate though is that it's just the fucking unveiled misogyny where like the sheriff Wes is like, you ladies need rest. And they're like, what about you? And he's like, well, I'm a man. Right. So, so I'm, I'm going to stay be... up and solve this crime, <laughs> clearly. The FBI agent, no, she's a frail woman and she needs her beauty sleep. Yeah. And it's like, well, what about the other FBI agent? Oh, he checked out like five scenes. We have ago. not seen him in so long. <laughs> he does not exist in this film anymore. I think he left. Yeah. <laughs> The set. So, yeah. And, and, and so the, the, the women leave and Terry's going to go take a nap too. And he's like, Hey man, uh, do you think we should continue to violate photo Matt Steve's civil liberties? Cause like, it's <laughs> oh, not yeah. like the loss is going to get worse at this point or whatever. Or should we just let him go? Yeah. And he's like, funsies. Let's just keep him a I'll while. keep him a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah. longer." laughs> so, and then oh, one little detail that we have to add at the end of the scene. So Peg goes and gets in her car. And somebody jump scares their way up from behind. But it turns out it's just her fiance. It's just, it's not, it's just. Yeah, like Peg knows she's there. Right. (laughs) He's like, I just took a nap in the car. Clearly, where else did you think I was? Right, yeah, exactly. (laughs) I was was just in there with you guys. Cool, just don't sit up like The Undertaker when you you do that. (laughs) Yeah. Because I like, I'm in the front. Yeah. (laughs) So, okay, so now that he's sent everybody home, Wes can do some hardcore detecting, which is, like, obviously, it involves a lot of spreading photographs out in front of you in various formats. Yeah, I don't, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to sheriff this thing to death with my eyes. Yes. <laughs> look at pictures, and then this, the crime will be solved. This is my favorite scene, because this is, like, a trope in all the cop movies, and they do it so badly here. He's just like... Looking around, he's like, all right, picture Elisa Colvin. She, she's from the town and got murdered. And then picture a Tammy, also from the town. And he's like, are they the same person? And pushing the photos. <laughs> no, okay. That, that's just, obviously, that doesn't even make sense. That I thought that would help me do a thing. All right. <laughs> all right. I'm going to look at coffee, coffee, hot what? No. All right. Nothing's working for me. And he, he keeps trying to do that. And it never goes anywhere. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. That's his whole scene. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. He does but the thing with hair color for a second. He's perseverating. Too. Yeah. That's it's not for a second. He's perseverating on hair color. He's like, what color? She's a natural blonde. No, not natural blonde. Are you the, sure? Uh, I'm going to call the another match jurisdiction. The drapes is the yeah. question I'm asking. And he's yeah. like, I'm just going to call the 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 station at three in the morning and find out if she's a natural blonde. Like what is happening? 
Yeah. No one right. cares. <laughs> There's okay, so and and then we we cut to like Peg's boyfriend driving her home, right? He's like, you know, I'll drive because I'm the man. And she's like, wait a minute, where are we going? And haven't you been kind of crammed into this story for no discernible reason quite (laughs) a bit at this point? And they have this creepy ass fucking conversation about how they're saving themselves for marriage. Oh, that was so weird. He's like, don't Ed me, Peg. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing because she's like, Ed, don't Ed me, Peg. Hey, don't Peg me, Ed is a way better way to say it. Anyway, yeah. So it's way different meaning when it goes the other direction. But yeah. And he literally isn't like, I'm not trying to fuck you. He says, this isn't like a make out thing. A make out thing. Like, you're 45 years old. Yes! You're 40 fucking five years old. Yes, this isn't sir. a make out. I'm not trying to trap you so I can put my tongue in your mouth. Like, oh my God, Mormons. <laughs> Like embarrassing. Yeah, he goes, no, no, I'm saving myself for our wedding night. And I'm like, okay, that's got to be your serial killer, right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, at this point, I'm fully committed to the idea that Ed is the killer for no reason. Right. But I know this is what's about to happen. Right, because there's no reason for anybody. You knew it was going to be drawn out of a hat. And it really, I mean, they sold me on this one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because then, then Wes, who's sitting there going, "Mm, not sure how to solve crimes, Hmm, there's one cup we didn't run fingerprints on, the coffee cup. And we think this is Ed's coffee right. cup. It's a paper coffee cup. I don't know if it would have a fingerprint on it, but somehow well, he gets a fingerprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we see that he sees something important that we don't fucking see. Right, so we're supposed to think it's Ed. Right. Ed is the killer. Ed's at home cleaning his gun. <laughs> we're like, yeah, okay. Ed's clearly the killer. Just playing with his giant rifle it's in the giant, dark, just it, like you it, do. But it's it's seven feet long. It's this ridiculous BFG from a video game kind of fucking gun. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, if Ed knew they were running prints all day and night and he knew he was the killer, why did he set his cup down right next to all the cups <laughs> of prints they're running and not throw it away? Like, what an idiot Ed right. is. Yeah, he actually knew about that ridiculous fingerprinting thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. He was in on that. He was doing it. He was the one dusting. Yeah, he was helping him out. Well, and then yeah. it, what's funny is that it turns out it's not Ed, but like, the person it is, it's even fucking dumber that they would have left the coffee cup <laughs> yes. there. Yeah. Womp, womp, That's womp. True. This is the sad trombone moment of the film. Right. So we see Wes hauling ass to what we <laughs> think is Ed's place to go save Peg, but it turns out that he's actually at <gasps> Terry's place. Yes. Just as they show him arrive, they show that Ed does not turn his gun on Peg, but instead sits down on the edge of the couch to protect her while she sleeps. Yeah, nothing yep. bad can happen there. Nothing bad can come Because he's a good guy with a right, gun. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's just fixing the sight on the rifle by pointing it at Peg for a <laughs> yeah. second on the couch yeah. while she's sleeping. And he's like, oh, sight's good, sits down. Yep, yep, That's yeah, right. exactly. That still works. <laughs> yeah, but now Sheriff West is at Terry's house. Terry's and Terry house. is just playing with a gun in the dark too. <laughs> yep. yeah he's got, he's got his gun completely disassembled on his kitchen table yeah this he, is very important that's a very important detail completely he is completely disassembled, disassembled yes he is every he's single cleaning piece. his gun exactly so wes comes in and he's like hey i have a very slow uh revelation at this point to have with you oh i'm gonna tell it in in monologue form yes exactly over a <laughs> yeah. very long is yeah so he starts going down the list of all of the women who have disappeared mysteriously in the town that they never figured out were murdered And he's like you remember lisa colvin the girl who died in that rock climbing accident while wearing pumps it, it occurred to me <laughs> that you know maybe she wasn't out there hiking after all when she fell to her death and, uh, with her red hair. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. Right. And Terry's like, hmm, that's <laughs> weird. Um, and he's like, and what about Tammy? What's her name that ran off to California and left a note that said, I ran off to California. Don't look for me. I certainly wasn't murdered. Yeah. I think there might have been something to that as well. With her red hair. Her red hair as well. And he's like, yeah, you got me. I have a thing for killing redheads. It's so stupid. Why? And I write, <laughs> wait, so Terry has a record in CODIS? How would he not have known that before he hired him as a deputy? But this is the callback to the foreman who didn't run a background check and who said, I deserve to get robbed. Here, Terry goes, you never ran a background check. So basically, you killed those women. 
him. He's like, you're right. Because I didn't run a background check on you. It's my fault. They're dead. Like that is like the realization. And I'm like, none of it works. Exactly. And that's the thing. That was the whole bit is that he said that it wasn't very Christ like to do background checks. He's not wise like a serpent is the problem. So then Wes is like, okay, you just admitted to multiple murders. Why don't you just put these cuffs on and we'll go back? And he's like, I'm just going to keep putting my gun together if you don't mind. I'm just going to slowly, and I'm in no great hurry (laughs) as I monologue back to you about how it would have been fine if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. I will ever so slowly put this gun together. Oh, and then he makes an amazing turn. Up until this point, he's like, who, me? You thought it was me? And then finally he goes, and I don't understand because Miss Brigham, she was blonde. I even checked. Her hair wasn't naturally red. And he goes, it was red when I finished with it. And I was like, whoa, what right? the what? fuck? He just turned hard. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> See, a seemingly meaningless distinction. It was the girl in the car from California was the one with the, that had the, that wasn't a redhead. Uh, Miss Brigham was. Also just very clearly like, well, that ruins the entire thing that you just discovered to make to solve the murders. Right. Well, they, they, <laughs> like everything about right. this whole thing about red hair doesn't matter is what you're saying. Well, they they, they kind of try to clean that up in the next scene. But yes, exactly. And it's do they? Yeah, I'll point it out. Uh, Meredith throws out as a throwaway line. Oh, for it. OK. But this gives him time to slowly <laughs> polish each of his bullets and one by one put them back mm-hmm. into the gun that's mm-hmm. not quite put together yet. And he's adding piece after piece. Yeah, he could have just literally Wes could have just reached out and grabbed like a spring. Yes, yeah, worked. right, exactly. <laughs> and he <laughs> wanted <laughs> piece. <laughs> 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 like, no. Uh, not a working uh, gun anymore. Oh, dude, give it back. Give it your. I'm taller than you. I will get it. I will get it. <laughs> but instead, he's like, I want it to get close. Yeah. Too close. <laughs> right. I want to give him a sporting chance or something. Yeah. So he, he, he puts his gun together very slowly and, and don't and, put that last piece on your gun. You're putting the last don't. piece on your Don't load the first bullet. Okay. Sec, don't load the second. It takes so long for this to build. And while he's assembling his gun, Terry is also systematically disassembling the Mormon religion. Yes. He's literally saying things like, <laughs> your God didn't help that girl while I was fucking pounding her and then slitting her throat. And he's like, true. true. That's, no, that's, that's a good, true. that's a good fucking. Mm. Yeah. Your prayers point. did nothing to save any of the girls. I brutally raped and murdered. You you got me on nope, that. You're one. right. I didn't. What about if you would, if you were going to murder more of them, maybe those prayers, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, hmm, Terry's making some good points. I'm feeling this. And then Terry's wife walks in with a baby on her hip and she's like, what's happening? I don't like this. And Wes is like, your <laughs> husband's a brutal serial killer. And she's like, I still don't get it. Why are you <laughs> letting him build his gun still? Right. He's yeah, exactly. Still, he's, I'm watching him try put to it back together. you overpower him at some point here? He's and- loading bullets. Take your gun out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he does, he even takes his gun out and points it at him and shit. And he's like, yes, at any point here, I could shoot you in any non-fatal way and end this. Yeah. Right. But instead, he waits. Or just take a spring or just tip you over since you're sitting down and I'm standing up. It's so good. I love that. The idea of him just taking the little spring. And I like, know. I'm just pocketing it. And he just, just eats it. And he's like, come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so. so finally, Terry's like, do I put it in my own mouth? Or do I put it up to your head? Okay, I'll go ahead. And then Wes goes. Yeah. And then Wes shoots dead. him. Yeah. And I was just like, well, that was the most boring gunfight in cinematic history. Leave it to the Mormons <laughs> to make the gunfight <laughs> the most boring part of the movie. <laughs> and then and then the wife runs over to the bloody mess in the corner, heaves her body on top of him crying. And she's like, get out, get out. And he's like, okay. Like, it doesn't work like no, that, you don't lady. Get the- <laughs> like, you don't have the power now. <laughs> oh, but then Wes has to, he's going to do some capital A acting for us, guys. Wes oh, is, God, he's going to so lean bad. against the wall and he's going to do some ugly crying. And it is not great. No. Okay. And also, here's the point where the movie usually ends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could just end it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fucking no, there hell. will need to be some adjacent Mormonism. There is <laughs> eight <laughs> minutes 
of bread now. <laughs> We're going to get an eight minute bread scene to close. Okay. So we get first, we, he, he's back at the, at his bishopric or whatever. By the way, it's not like an, a fun eight minute bread montage of just like different <laughs> breads showing up. If that's what you're picturing, that's what I popped into my no, head. Just right, now. right. Not in a that's good way. That's delightful. Not in a Who good way. Who doesn't love bread? No, we actually watched like an eight minute scene of mostly slow moving Mormon wonder bread. It's yep. so bad. Yeah. yeah. So first Meredith stops by to say goodbye, you know, and he's like, you know, I sure feel bad about deputizing a serial killer, rapist, murderer without doing a background check. And she's like, that, oh, you don't blame just yourself, man. Anybody could have who uh, deputized a serial killer. <laughs> you know what? It just you know, you'll get better. You'll know now. Like uh, Ralph, you'll know now to do that. <laughs> she says, nobody blames you. And I'm like, I everybody fucking come on. Oh, for sure. Bread. Yeah. Fully blamed. And then he's like, I blame myself. So I'm going to ugly cry while I eat more bread. Yeah. Oh, while I don't eat more bread. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so he goes out for the whole church service thing. And he's late. He shows up during the sacrament. So he's like really, really late. Also, like, why did he go to church? I feel like you're allowed to take a like, day Like, you can off. stay home. Yeah. You just... You just had to kill the guy who you thought was basically like a son to you. Right. Because it turns out he's a murderer. Like, you're probably going to have some fucking, you need to therapize that for a while. You would fucking hope so. But yeah, no. So he walks in. And I, so I didn't know that he was late. I, for all I know, this is when the fucking bishop walks in. But he walks in <laughs> like super slow, like it's his wedding. I mean, I know he's got the leg the brace. But yeah, exactly. It's ahead of very, I'm getting married here today thing going. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so now it's time for fucking 14 year old kids to, Break up Wonder Bread and say a magic spell and shit to turn it into flesh. Yeah, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy son. Oh, oh the prayers, they're so triggering because the thing about the Mormon religion is these are all lifted out of the books. Mm -hmm. So they're always read verbatim every time. And so it's so triggering hearing them. Like I was like, <laughs> it like had bile rising up. Also, this really made me think, what are they doing during COVID? Because this whole body of Christ bread thing is not very sanitary. It's like, here's the body of Christ shielded by COVID. You know what they're doing? They're spreading COVID. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So you got it. You're right. Yep. yep. <laughs> Wrote a whole book about it, actually. <laughs> yeah. So they pass around their fucking cannibal bread. And this is so goddamn weird. So here's, here's what's happening. I'll clue you in, the listener, better than this movie did. Wes won't eat the bread because he feels bad about shooting his son and doesn't feel like he deserves any Jesus body right now. But nobody else in the congregation will eat the bread before the bishop, right? So then until dad gets the big piece of chicken, they won't eat their bread. So they go all the way through the <laughs> the whole fucking church and show us everyone denying the bread until the bishop goes ahead and eats this. This goes on for like 14 goddamn years. It's long. <laughs> I did enjoy watching the like altar boy or whatever the Mormon version of that, the like Wonder Bread bearer. The ironic I, priesthood, yeah. Yeah, the kid with the ironic priesthood. The, the kid with the Wonder Bread. He's, yeah. he, he shows it to Sheriff Bishop Wes, and he won't take it. Wes won't take it. Okay, interesting. If he's supposed to be a Jesus character, maybe he didn't want to eat himself because that's even weirder. That's masturbation. <laughs> just thought right? of that. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's just like masturbation, correct? But <laughs> that's how that works. I, I, <laughs> when I masturbate, I like to take a little nibble now and again. <laughs> hey, come on, look. If we could take a little nibble now and again, we all would. It's not a matter of want, it's a matter of care. Cool. Okay? Let's be honest right. about what we've all done a little bit. So <laughs> this kid this kid doesn't know what to do though. So he he hands the like tray of wonder bread or he presents it to the sheriff bishop and he won't take any and he, the kid's like i don't know what to do i know it's really cute they show him the looking bread. at all the I other little do? Yeah, exactly. and they're all like i don't know I'm, like what are we doing this ain't on the fucking spreadsheet guys hold on yeah. a second <laughs> and then they start passing it around to finally it's like all right i guess i just send it down the aisles now they pass it down one of the rows and everybody starts not you know they're like all right we're gonna do what the bishop did yeah this part i don't get at all like what is the what are they telegraphing here? I, don't, I guess it's like solidarity with him yeah. for a second. But it's solidarity against the sacraments of Christ. Exactly. So I was like, is he becoming an atheist? Right. Like, this I, is awesome. I got really excited for a minute. But then I remembered that 
long after I knew I was an atheist, I was eating that fucking Wonder Bread yeah, because I was right. hungry. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, yeah. the best part of this is fucking Ralph. He is my hero in this scene because he almost he doesn't quite do what, what I wanted him to do, but the bread tray goes past, <laughs> goes past him, and he almost he stares at it for a second. <laughs> He's like, and I'm he comes real so hungry, close to being the one guy who's like, "No, I'm fucking hungry. I'm having a piece of this Wonder Bread. I don't here's care." The thing too, this is a very Mormon thing. The first Sunday of every month. You fast for breakfast and lunch, and then you take the money that you would have spent on those meals for your family and you donate it to the hungry. Nice. Yeah, the first Sunday of every month. And so it was especially bad on fasting Sundays because the only Mm. thing you're allowed to eat is a fucking bread. Oh, wow. And I was kind of hoping it was fasting day. But then, (laughs) oh, but during this part where they're just passing the tray and you watch every person in the congregation. Every single named or otherwise character in the film, yes. Did you notice that there's no sound? Right. There's no music. Nope. There's no anything. <laughs> it's just quiet clink, clink. A mm. little bit of clink here and there. Yeah. So, yes. You know, like it's so They might weird. as well have forks and knives on plates <laughs> yes. clinking for no reason. Yes. Yeah. It goes on for so fucking long like that. But then finally, once they've gone through the whole fucking thing, they bring it back up to Wes and he's like, all right, fine. Fuck, man. I if The whole thing gets screwed up. If I don't eat the bread, I'll eat the bread. And I, I'm so happy about this part. He eats the bread, and then we cut to Meredith, who is sitting in the very back of the church, and she's like, this is fucking weird. I'm out. And then she just leaves. <laughs> oh, see, I thought that they gave her the twinkle in the eye, which was basically like the closing scene of like, he's eating the bread, and she gives him a thumbs up. You know, like, you, did, you did it, air bud. Um, <laughs> he, he takes the bread. He's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He takes the bread, though, and it legit is what it should look like if you were actually eating the body of Christ, because he's like choking and gagging and crying. Yes! <laughs> like, if it was actually human flesh, that would be a reasonable response. Just like masturbating. Like yeah, yeah exactly, totally. Exactly. I also tend to, when I nibble, I cry. I do yeah, cry. Well, obviously. <laughs> no, I just did I, I wrote in my notes, like, oh, he did such a good job with the ugly crying earlier. We're going to give him another shot. Yeah. Yes, it's really bad. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, yeah. So, and I guess that's going to do it for our review of Brigham City. And it's going to do it for Mormon Movie Month, I do believe. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to reel you back in next week. So, Heath, tell us what's on deck. Sons of Thunder, episode four. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. They play poker. <gasps> oh, fuck yes. All right. So with Sons of Thunder to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 319 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for hanging out with us today. Hear more from her by checking out karasantamaria.com or by checking the show notes for a handy link. Also, a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathe Gay, The Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Beautiful Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neil Bosnick, I'm no illusions promising to work harder on another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Somebody spoke first after the really long Wonder Bread weeping, and that person got in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Wes hires a new sheriff's deputy and forgets to run a background check. Again, (laughs) (laughs) ruh-roh! The ACLU went on to sue Wes for pretty much everything he'd ever done. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.